Hey guys, brand new podcast. The Fully Loaded Comedy Festival is coming your way. David Tell, Joey Diaz, Fortune Themester, Nikki Glazer, Mark Norman, Big J Oakerson, Taylor Thomason, Sal Bocano, and we are adding more. Go to FullyLoadedFestival.com and get your tickets. Cinco de Mayo at the Greek. Find me. Today's podcast, I this guy needs no introduction. You know him from Fighter and the Kid. You know him from King and the Sting and the Wing. You know him from the Food Truck Diaries, Below the Belt, The Shab Show, fucking Calabasas Fight Companion. He's got a new special coming out. It's going to be on Thick Boy YouTube. Oh, there will be a link underneath here. Go click that link and watch it. He, I, have, I love this guy. He is absolutely one of the fucking best guys doing it in our field right now without a fucking doubt. His output is undeniable, and he is the sweetest guy I know. I really do adore this guy. Ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, my friend, stand-up comedian, podcaster, fighter, professional athlete, Brendan Schaub. I just got tested at the doctor's office, so I'm clean. Tested for what? Everything. I go. How often do you go? Are we rolling? How, how often? Yeah. How often do you go to the doctor? Uh, never, sir. Really? I just went to the dentist for the first time in 14 years. Uh, I'm not a big dentist fan. Nah. Let me see your chompers. Uh, they're all fake. Oh, so you're good. Who and I was gonna get them. I was gonna get them here. We'll put this prominently. Just ah, right, you go. Just wanted you to try it, dude. I've been dying to try this. I saw you had this the other day, and I was like, I'm dying Cheers, to try it. Brother. Cheers, brother. Cheers, man. Great to see you, man. Now, what is it, what is it we're drinking? You, this is Tiger Thick. This is your boy's whiskey, and it's the first to market. It is uh, Japanese whiskey. Ooh, I like Japanese whiskey. Yep, so it's the first blend of Japanese whiskey and American bourbon. Really? Pretty smooth, my man. I can't wait. Well, I like it a lot. It's nice. I like it a lot. Yeah, it's a little it's nice. too smooth. It's got a little buttery taste to it. Yeah, I love it, man. It's funny. Yeah. I just went to the doctor. Um, wait, I want to hang on. I, I, I don't want to. Uh, congratulations, congratulations on everything you're doing. Me? You're, yeah, Look yeah. At you do. No, no, no. You're, you're, you're. You got the Thick Boy Studios up in uh, yeah. up in the hills, Calabasas. Yeah, I, I mean, you introduced me to Chappelle Lace, who I think is one of the most interesting people out there ever. I mean, really, one of the most fascinating dudes who I want. I got to get on the podcast. I'm really bad at reaching out to people because I'm so wrapped up in like work that that unless like you hit me up for this and that I would never think I would never, there's a lot of people I'd never I never think to reach out to like friends like Theo, Callen, you. I feel I would, bad because I know how busy you guys are. So, I was going to reach out to Delia, but I was yeah. like I was like that's a weird. I want him to reach out if you want if you'd like to do it. Really? Yeah. I th- I think you should reach out to him. Yeah, because yeah, I, I it saw go, it would go a long ways. I saw I well, I you know, I know, but I I, I said something sideways about him one time, but did you? Well, it wasn't on I, here? I, no, it was on a, another podcast. And I and I I didn't mean for it to be bad, but I guess it came out very bad. It's all dicey. You, but it's, all, it's just weird. There's to, no way to handle it. It's weird to comment on anyone that goes through anything because you're like I because like I obviously I have feelings about things I don't the the thing is you don't know anything you don't know what's going on with people Correct. you don't know what's going on with them personally my my thing is is yeah I'm getting better it's just the I think the longer you do it it's like dude you don't have to give opinion on everything man it's okay if you don't know I went on Schultz's and he goes tell me about Leah Thompson I and loved I, you on there I was, I was great I didn't him. know who the fuck Leah Thompson was oh the transgender swimmer yeah I didn't know and he was like that's fucking good. Yeah, I was like, "What?" Well, he goes, "I like what you're doing." <laughs> and I was like, "No, oh, serious. No, seriously. I don't know anything about about her." <laughs> yeah, I'm, this going to be a better time. You were listening off all the things I've going on. I tell you what, Bert, and you know this more than anyone. For the first time in my life ever, man, I've had some heavy shit, dude. Yeah. And I've just been swamped for the first time in my life. Just anxiety through the roof. Just I was like, "Oh, I need, I need to slow down for a second. Oh. First time ever." Really? Ever, ever. I yeah. wish I could do that. Yeah, but the, it was, you know, because my special comes out uh, April 28th. Yeah. So it's like setting up all the PR for that. Like you said, reaching out to people sucks. And I decided to do it all myself. Like, I was like, ah, I'm going to take it in my own hands. Met with, you know, all the big companies, got the offers. And in every meeting, I said, well, what would you do for me? And they, you know, told me what they can do. And I was like, I just feel like you do it myself, man. So that that's what I decided to do. And then I was like, well, if I'm going to keep going that route, I'm going to do the same with the, instead of hiring a PR later, PR lady, I'll do it myself. And it's been a beast, man. Because you got to remember, 
I'm touring nonstop, come up with a new hour. And then I have the the network, Thick Boy Network. Yeah. It's just a lot. What do you got over there? You got? I have uh, Food Truck Diaries, Flashback Fight Nights, Calabas Fight Companion. Calabas Fight Companion. I, I should you take notes. There's, hold on. There's so much I want to talk to you about. Okay. Okay. Write that. Calabas Fight Companion. Keep uh, going. Calabas Fight Companion, um, Fire and the Kid, Shab Show, uh, Chappelle AC Show. Mark Harley's haters will say, "Okay, write down Mark Harley. Uh, you're gonna love him." And then, and then also write down uh, uh, Mark uh, Bradley Martin. Bradley Martin, yeah, yeah. he's a good dude. Because I don't know anything about his gym, but I know that. Oh, okay, yeah, keep going, keep going, gym. keep going. Uh, I know I missed one. Um, so we have King, the Sting in the Wing with Theo and Chris. Yeah. Um, I you know I mentioned Find the Kid. That podcast is that it. podcast is so good because it's it, it's old school podcasting in my opinion. It's the it's not old school. It was. It's like you. You were a part of a moment in podcasting history where, where it was an, like an old school throwback to when Rickles would lean into the Tonight Show and be like, "Hey, you guys still filming over here?" And yeah. Like, Come on and sit down on yeah. the couch. Like, no, and I remember that was like the coolest thing about, uh, Fighter and the Kid and and Theo and Delia. You guys were all in the same building. Yeah. At the same time, and you guys would just kind of lean in, and it was so fun to fucking watch. And so now fun. you're doing, Kiter, Fighter the Kid or King and the Sting in the Wing. Yep. And it's it's a throwback, in my opinion. Agree. For for pe- old school podcast fans, like people that love podcasts and, th- and that's why we did it because yeah. you know when the pandemic hit and everything you know shit hit the fan with so many people and everyone left i mean we're based out of like most of the crew still in la man yeah you know everyone else left and it just you know hurt my feelings and i was like god the hang man there's no more hang it uh, it kind of sucks it kind of sucks have yeah. you been down to austin much uh yeah 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 it, you know yeah it's cool yeah it's not LA, man. You know, I, and I'm not throwing shade at Austin. I think Rogan's going to blow that place up and it's going to be a hub. And that's great. The more places we have to work, great. But I'm just, I, I just love LA, man. There's, you know, just like you, I travel everywhere. When I touch down in LA, I'm like, oh, God, thank God. There's just, you get what you pay for, man. Taxes suck. You know, the governor and the mayor bitches, but, you know, get what you pay for. Great weather. It's, uh, it's funny. There's a different vibe in the green room. Because you're trying to get every moment out of the moment that you can. Because I'm afraid I'll never see these people again. Like it was me, Ron White, Joe, uh, Shane Gillis, Mark Norman, Tony Hinchcliffe. Jesus. And I was like, "Where's this at?" In, in Austin. Oh, gotcha. And I'm like, I don't want, I don't want to lose any of this. Like, I don't want to. I was like, "Hold on, everyone, slow down." Like, I want to. And then like my friends started talking, and I was like, "Shut oh, the, the worst. fuck up!" Yeah. I was like, "You're ruining it." <laughs> You, Shut you, up. You know Joe know, well enough that now he's got eyes going around the room. Like, who the fuck's this person yeah, that we never man. met speaking? Yes, sir. And so uh, different level. Yeah, yeah. He's at a different like. It's like you're hanging out with fucking you know government official. You know. When did you do? You, when when do you think you knew that things were changing for Joe? I was talking to someone about this the other day. Cause I still see him as as I still see him as the guy I met. I forget that he is who he is. Me too. When did you I, first notice, like, oh, wait, this isn't, this isn't my, this is, things are changing. Ah, oh, that's such a good question. I don't, because to your point, I, cause I, I talked to Joe damn near daily, you know, like, at least tax. We'll talk at least on the phone, you know, two, three times a week. So to me, he's the, he's the exact same man. Even during the height of all that crap, he was, you know, he's cool, you know? So yeah. he, he's the same dude. So, but as far as that, I I guess it got weird when the whole, with like the whole vaccination thing, right? Yeah. Like that was going viral. And they were labeling them as anti-mask and anti-vaccine and all this shit. And then uh, friends and close family members would be like, "How about this Joe Rogan guy? Believe this piece of shit?" I'm like, "Whoa, whoa, whoa, whoa! <laughs> piece of shit! That's what I'm yeah. like. What the fuck's wrong with you?" And then I realize that they're just reading like the headlines yeah so now that trump's out they need uh, another enemy they need you know they need someone to point their gun at and have be rogan he's so big my, my so dad, they start going yeah. after them so i think what happens with that is he's just you know he's, he's just living a different life and i will say this i don't you know like he's you know he said this this went viral him saying you know if people keep hanging on every word i say 
like then I'm just gonna stop doing it. Like I don't want to make headlines all the time. Like he yeah. doesn't want this. And what happened with that cancel culture thing with him and the uh, vaccines? It made him bigger, way bigger. Have you talked to him about it? Like the downloads have gotten bigger. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah, what yeah. happens is most people aren't sheep and they see the headlines and like I don't know this guy. What's he talking about? And he's everywhere. So well, let me try it. And this is a show like oh he's actually oh he's not far right. Oh he's not you know racist. Oh he's not whatever. Like this is a dope ass show. So his downloads went boop 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 boop. So they're making him bigger. It's which funny. he doesn't want. It that's when I started realizing is when family members when I, I remember when I went to a party one time and I and someone introduced me as he knows Joe Rogan. And I went, well, easy. <laughs> hey man. In my head, I'm like, I'm like, I guess that's currency to you guys. I'm like, yeah, but for- I'm like, I, I I know that that's what I say to myself when I intro myself on yeah. stage. <laughs> <laughs> I'll throw a couple Joe Rogan references in my bits, just get some yeah. applause. But yeah, come on. Don't you ever. <laughs> don't you ever. I uh he, you know, secret time or not secret time, but this is Joe. I don't think it's not a lot of people know this, but like uh so I, I got a pool table. And so I just text him, hey man, I I need a like a I want to get a good good pool cue. Oh man. Like, can you tell me the you and you already know how the end of the story goes. hundred percent. I go, can you tell me? And he goes, just what's your address? And so I text him my address. He goes, I'm gonna have him send some pool cues. And they're legit. They're the pool cues. They're the pool cues. He they're, knows the shit. They're the pool cues. He doesn't send anything half ass. So But nothing's better than if you can help him out. Because obviously he's done so much for me. He's done oh, so yeah. much for you. It, Tom, every Joey, every, you look at the list. He's helped so many people out. And then finally, I was able to help him out. Really? Yes. With, on what? I don't know if he's going to tell this story. But uh, so, uh, fuck it. So he, uh, I'm, a, I, I, uh, I, I'm in a car business where I invest in flip cars and stuff like that. And um, kind of a long story, but let's get do it. So. I was uh, doing the comedy store in La Jolla, right? And I'm doing meet and greets. And uh, this guy comes up to me. He's like, in a, you know, doesn't look like my fan. I don't know. I thought he owned the fucking, I don't know. Yeah. Owned La Jolla. I don't know. But he was like in a dope, like tailored suit, slick back hair. Older guy, gray hair, silver fox, dime yeah. piece. I'll give him that. And <laughs> smelt great. And so he's like, oh, you're a, you're a car guy, right? I'm like, yeah, I'm a car guy, man. And he's like, oh, what, like, and we're just talking cars. He's like, uh, what, like, what's your favorite? I go, oh, nothing beats a GD2 RS, man. Like, that's my car. I tuned it. That thing's the best car I've ever had. And he goes, that's cool. You, uh, you a Ferrari guy? And I go, yeah, yeah, I like Ferraris, but uh, not as much as my Porsche. I love Ferraris. I had one like four years ago out of F12. I don't like really front engine cars. It kind of sucked. I was impressed, man. And he goes, that's too bad. And I go, yeah, yeah. But I go, uh, I, uh, applied to get allocated ferraris do you know how ferrari works no so let's say you wanted a brand new ferrari Uh you could go in and let's say the msrp you know is 500k you can't buy it at msrp because you're not in the ferrari club so they're going to charge you probably two hundred twenty-five thousand over that to just because you're not part of the club so if you can get in the club which is usually like a 10-year waiting list to get allocated just to purchase at msrp you're you're making money it's a it's a it's a business yeah so it's you know 10 year waiting list there's fucking all sorts of people on that list so i told the guy you had an f12 when i bought you have to own the car in order to apply for the allocation so i had an f12 applied for and i told him i go yeah i applied like four or five years ago you know this is too expensive man he goes oh cool 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 he goes yeah you you'd look good in a fry i go yeah i know man have to be the right one though whatever next day driving down uh, somewhere in San Diego, going to get fish tacos or something fat with my brother, and uh, we get a call, and it's a uh, Ferrari of uh, North America. You know, hey, you got allocated a uh, uh, F8 Tributo Spider. You you know, you basically have five minutes because otherwise, if you don't buy it, they just move on to somebody else. I'm like, what? Like, yeah, you got a F8 Tributo Spider. It's uh, you know, British green, tan interior. Is that the one outside? Yep. And I was it's like, gorgeous. I'm on the list. Like, yeah, you jumped ahead of the list. I'm like, holy fuck. That guy I was talking to was the head of fucking North American Ferrari or whatever. He was like the guy. He just happened to be in town, saw one of my old bits and fucking came into the show. Shut up. Put me on the list. And then so now, so this is how this relates to the, going back to Rogan. So once you're in the club, there Ferrari's always, you know, building the newest Ferrari. And you can get allocated and you can go to that next level. So you, you'll be able to, it's, again, it's a hustle. You'll be able to sell whatever that, that car is, 500000 for 650000 700000 
you make your profits 200,000. So you're basically getting paid to drive Ferraris. So you'll sell it back to Ferrari and can roll it into their next car. Well, the next car is an SF90 Spider, which is like the Ferrari. Yeah. Things fuck, you know, it's, it's a hybrid. Are you pulling these up, Halston? Yeah, SF9. that's the F8 Tributo Spider there. Yeah, right there. Yeah. The wow. previous one was, was my car. So that's the SF90 Spider. It's nuts. It's 1100 horsepower. It's stupid. Yeah. So I get allocated one of those. <clears throat> I build it. And then uh, I'm telling Rogan about it. He's like, God, I fucking love one of those, man. I know you have to be allocated unless you want to pay that fucking crazy price. So then I just, uh, when I went in to get my Ferrari, I was just talking to him and, uh, like, you know, Rogan, I'm like, yeah, I'm like, dude, you know what he wishes he had? Like, well, I'm like, dude, he fucking all black SF9, he freaked the fuck out. Like, man, I think we closed allocation. I go, man, it's fucking Rogan though. You know, man, I bet he would do it. He goes, you think I, I bet man. So I think they pulled it off and got Rogan like the last allocation for all black SF90 spider. Holy shit. I know. So how do you But know- I felt I, I was like, oh, I helped him out. Yeah. yeah. Like he could have bought it and like but at a crazy price, sure. But I was like, oh yeah. There you go, dude. What's yeah. up? Dude? Hey, thanks for the career. <laughs> Here's your eight hundred thousand dollar car. <laughs> how do you know so much about so many different things? Like are you just are you just investing or like are you only working in the in the like I, I know nothing about cars. I know yeah. nothing. Have you always been into cars? Always since a kid. I grew really? up. Uh, the reason why that I'll never sell that GT2 RS Porsche because uh, growing up, my dad, uh, his, you know, we didn't grow up wealthy, so my dad's number one, like, kind of north star to to signal that he made it. It was a 911 Porsche. So we grew up in our living room was a framed, you know, Porsche. So we go to car shows and we'd always just beeline for the Porsche, and that was it. So when I bought my first Porsche, as soon as I could barely afford it, I bought a Porsche 911 and then I just went, you know, and I just kept going up from there. And then I bought my, my goal was not just the 911 growing up as, you know, a fan of 911, the, the GT2 RS is the fucking Porsche. It's the the ultimate Porsche. So it's a, it's a 911 on steroids. It's, it's built for the racetrack. Tom knows all this shit. When I I told Tom that I uh, tuned my uh, GT2 RS, he's like, you're fucking crazy, dude. He and Tom, I guess, had the Porsche, like Porsche guy uh, in, from North America on his show. He's like, I have a friend who turned it, tuned his GT2 RS. And the guy's like, oh, he's an idiot, man. Those things are so fast already. Tom's like, yeah, I don't know what to tell you, man. He's, like, he's crazy. <laughs> the, um, yeah, Tom's- I just love him. So the GT, that's my exact car right there. Really? Yeah. I just wow. fucking love cars, man. I love them. And then now, kind of like Rolex. Like there's, there's such a business in it where if you invest right, you can, you know, rock it for a little bit and then flip them and make money. Um, I got given a Rolex from, by my dad at a, at a, um, on my 40th birthday. And I, it was my watch. It was like the watch. I, no, no, not this one. And then this one was, is much cheap, much cheaper than the one my dad gave me. I mean, what my dad gave me is, uh, I, I don't is even Daytona know. Daytona or something? I, no, 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 no. So, uh, <laughs> no, 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 no. Well, no. So. No. <laughs> so that's funny you say that because i said to leanne i said that's the only other watch i want is the the white daytona the paul, the paul newman daytona yeah big and, boy watch yeah and so uh and so they they said something about it and people are like yeah that's the watch nah, you're, you're not touching you're not it getting for 31. it for 31 yeah i think you're gonna get it for 50 oh uh, that's probably more than that brother i i said to someone i i got this watch i got this watch because i was in People have heard me say this, but I was in Vegas and uh, and they they have a great Rolex store there. And yeah. the lady brought it. She goes, "What do you have now?" I told her. She said, "Bring out the. This is a classic watch. This is a classic watch. This is a great watch for you." And you know, it's you're getting it from the dealer, so you're not getting upcharged the way you would with a broker. Yeah. And uh, and someone was like, "Oh, you know, you could now sell that for like twelve grand or whatever." The, the is that sub This was yeah. This was I got it for ten. The GMT. And yeah, so that's a great deal. someone's like, "You can get it. You can sell it now." And I was like, "I don't want to sell it. Like no. I want to wear it. Like yeah. I only buy the watch to mark. Like I wanted to buy. I wanted to buy a, a Rolex on this tour because I've been busting my ass and I wanted a treat. I wanted something that I could look at and go remember it. Yeah, and go that, to me they're trophies. Yeah, watches to me are trophies. Yeah, yeah. watches to me. Uh, all the watches I have, they mean something at time of my life. Like almost like tattoos to me. Like I'll never sell them ever. Yeah, I don't I never thought of it's I don't think of them selling them. Cars are different for me because I really enjoy my car. 
like I enjoy it, but I'm not really certain what car I have. Like, and I and I ha- I always think I should look at the number. It's the S is the bigger of the Mercedes. Yeah, it's like S. I think you have a S55. Yeah, something like yeah. that. And but I don't really. I I liked. I wanted to sit in a big sedan. I like being in a big sedan. This thing's dope. Man. I love. I love like a larger bodied car. Especially with kiddos, yeah, and yeah, I and I, the whole fam can jump. I, in there. I feel like a real grown up when my girls sit in the back seat and there's and they're sprawled out, yeah, and Leanne's in the front and they're like, it's cold in here. I go, oh, that's what it should be in a car, yep. like you know, like, and so the, I I think I I think of things more romantically. I do too, yeah, not not so much as a business. With yeah. yeah, don't get twisted on cars. It's not like I'm. Uh, but get them a month <laughs> clip and I'm making. Pro- uh uh-uh. uh. Yeah. Like they told me. I really like this whiskey, by the way. Oh, thank you. I wasn't me planning too. on I getting it. drunk today. I know. I, I'm I think, down, dude. I think I'm yeah, gonna. Me too. I have Corolla in like at like uh, 12, 12 40, yeah, 12 45. I'm firing the kid after this, whatever. What dude. time you gotta do fighter? Uh, okay. 1 30. Okay. I guess. Yeah, and, so, and then I get on a plane. Tonight. What do you got? Uh, uh, going to Nashville. Before the festival? Uh, no, yeah, but yeah, but I'm not in the festival. Like I, I booked it before the festival. Oh, gotcha! And then, so it just so happens it's there. And so now I'm in the festival, and so and I got kind of fucked. I kind of fucked. Is uh, <clears throat> I sold three at the Ryman, and I think they were thinking about adding a fourth, and then they just moved into the Grand Old Opry, which is like six thousand fucking tickets, and I'm like, <laughs> well, so, on top of those three Rymans, so, you no, know, no. So they pull one of the Rymans out, and they're like, well, fuck. If, Instead of two rhymes, we'll give it give it to someone else. Give it to something like Nate, and I'm not saying Nate. Nate's the wrong one. I'm I'm, not, I'm just saying Nate because he's my friend. And I can say whatever I want about yeah. him. Like give it to Nate Bargatze. He'll sell two Ryman's easy. Yeah, or and then Theo and then move. Yeah, like yeah. So give yeah. it to Theo. He'll give two Ryman's, and then move Bird over the Grand Ole Opry, and then we'll just see if he can clean that up. And then I get very OC, I'm very OCD about tour dates and and not I want everything to sell out clean. And and that's a very f- tall order when you're talking about single seats in the middle that weren't sold. And so I become a little obsessive and then I get into promo mode and then I start chewing on it and ruminating on it. And then and and then you become obsessed with it. <clears throat> yeah. You're also an expert when it comes to that stuff. I, I'm I, not I, an expert, but I, I disagree, brother. Well, I, you know, you. I, I, yeah, I wouldn't out of out of any of the comics I know, as far as that stuff goes, you know, it to a freaking key, man. <laughs> Have you started your spring cleaning yet? The carpets need cleaning, the drapes need dusting, the lawn needs mowing. Spring has sprung, and the global leaders in below the waist grooming have the best tool for cleaning aisle five in your pants. Time to clear out your winter bush and join the four million men worldwide who trust Manscaped by going to manscaped.com for 20% off plus free shipping with the code BERT. Look, there's a ton of stuff I can tell you right now. I will let you know. The lawnmower 4.0 is next fucking level. It is next level. It's got a light. I turn my balls over the toilet and it gets dark. You can't see in there, but this light allows me to see what I'm doing. And it's waterproof. You can take it into the water. My wife has her own manscaped or her own lawnmower, and I have my own lawnmower. That's how great these things are. You can get the performance package. It's the only tool you're going to need. It's going to take care of everything it's got the lawnmower 4.0 the weed whacker which goes in your nose and ears and uh the crop preserver the crop reviver and that makes sure you know you keep your balls don't stick to your leg i really wish you weren't sitting next to me right now amanda it is the start of testicular cancer awareness month in april manscaped is partnered with the testicular cancer society to bring awareness to testicular cancer men's health and early cancer detection you can always fix it if you're still alive that's how that works guys don't ever forget that Manscaped is committing to raising awareness for the most common form of cancer in men ages 15 to 35 and giving support for fighters, survivors, family members impacted by testicular cancer as a part of the We Save the Balls initiative. Smell oh so fresh and oh so clean this spring and check yourself before you riggedy wreck yourself. Get 20% off plus free shipping with the code BERT at manscaped.com. That's 20% off plus free shipping with the code BERT at manscaped.com. It is time to throw out your old hygiene habits and upgrade your life. This podcast is brought to you by Bird Dogs. Bird Dogs is the only short you will ever need for the rest of your life. It is the, ev- I'll take care of everything short. And pants, by the way, they have joggers that are fucking awesome. I'll talk about those in a second. But what I love is when I'm packing, to not have to worry about underwear, pants, running pants, a bathing suit, something to wear to dinner. You just grab a pair of Bird Dogs. You throw them in your bag. 
You go running in them. They've got this great liner th that is phenomenal. You can go swimming in them. They dry super quick. You go out to dinner in them. You put on a collared shirt with a pair of bird dog shorts. They're amazing. Let's cut to the bird dog joggers. Fucking next level. You do not need jeans with these things. And they're comfortable as shit. You get on an airplane and you are presentable, good-looking joggers. Uh, they've got a liner so you can wear them to play golf. I absolutely love everything bird dog. They are my go-to. When I'm walking out the door, a couple pairs of bird dogs, and I'm done. Go to birddogs.com and enter the promo code BIRD. I'm going to throw in a free bird dog whistle football. That's birddogs.com and the promo code BIRD, and boom, a free bird dog football with your pair of bird dogs. You will not want to take these things off. I promise. This is, this is how my brain works. If you, and I've seen, I've seen people comment negatively, enough of the promos or whatever. And I'm like, okay, I understand that. Yeah, I know. Enough of the promos. Yeah. And I was Did you like, tell Nike or Domino's? Yeah. Hey, man, enough of the goddamn commercials. No more shoes. Like, I, I, like I, it's, it's funny when a guy says that because I go, then you're not, you're not a fan. You're just here to, you're, you're like, I, I'm a fan of certain things. I got Wilco. It's a very broad stroke opinion of mine. I'm a big fan of this band, Wilco. Mm hmm. I can't see enough posts about Wilco. Yeah. Like if, if Wilco tells me that they have a show at the Greek on May 5th, Cinco de Mayo, well, they don't because I do. Yeah. That's how well, I promote. <laughs> tight move. Yeah. But if they <laughs> told me they have a show at the Greek on May 5th, I'll buy tickets the second they release them. Yeah. Heads up, my life is pretty busy and I'll forget that I have tickets. I will forget. Yeah. I've done it before. <laughs> I bought the tickets and then forgot that they were coming in town. Yeah. So if they can, they 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 have carte blanche on posting all they want about that show because every time I see it, I go, oh cool, I'm going to that show. Yeah, you're like, I'm in. I, oh, and because <laughs> you're a fan. Yeah, yeah. If you're not a fan, if you're just there to be shitty, and there are a lot of guys that I say guys, not a lot of women are trolls. No, not I, Isn't I don't think I've ever had a hater who's a troll. I've never had like, a female what, troll. Oh, no, never. That would be a good fucking. That would be a good fucking, a good fucking move. Just be a female troll. Yeah, you don't like, see a lot of them. Fuck you, and I, and I wouldn't suck your dick. Like, oh, God, well, that one hurt. <laughs> yeah, they're like, you're fat, you're fat, and I think you probably have a fucking ton of stuff on your dick. Like, yeah, <laughs> Jesus Christ. Yeah, if a guy says, I don't give a fuck. Yeah, and so. Just get uh, more ice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, but, like, that's my thing is that, is that uh, I have no problem making all my Instagram, all my, I, and, and, and then they go, more stuff about your kids. Like that's what's crazy. It's like, dude, I, I, I purposely because uh, I purposely stop posting about the girls that are getting older. He gets a little because they're they're how old? Seventeen and fifteen, and George is going to college. That's where it gets a little dicey. I'm with like right now, my kids are really young, and I post them. Yeah, but I, it, you're kids, you're in a different Beautiful position. Kids, by Thanks, the way. dude. They're yeah. the best. But it's you're in a different position when they're that old. You know, I think the trolls like you're not coming after my two and six-year-old and they don't even have accounts but in high school and college if you know if they can't get to you they're going that way so it's a it's a different game but for yeah. and I, they I, did and they did oh wow and and and, and, and that's when i was like i was like oh, you know i don't really i don't really pay too i don't i pay attention or whatever you know a little bit i don't really pay too much attention i understand i understand the business uh of of you know, I understand the business enough where I go. Come to I the get territory. It. Yeah, I get it. it I, I asked for it. I put myself out Correct. there. If you want to critique me, you're totally allowed to. And by the way, they're probably pretty accurate critiques. Because everything you hate about me, I actually lay up in bed hating about myself, too. Yeah, so you're like, telling me. Sadly, I, I would know. get along with my trolls very well. If we met up at a bar yeah. and they were like, hey, man, can I talk shit about Bert? I'm like, I'm doing it right now. Yeah, <laughs> I'm in, dude. <laughs> I'm already doing it. Yeah. You, love it. you should hear what I have to say. Yeah, about yeah you think that's good. Uh, <laughs> but when yeah. they started coming after the girls, I went, uh, I was like, I, I, and they were doing it. It was, it was done on a very slick vile. And it was, and, and it really, it made me feel like, uh, oh man, why did, why did this have to happen? Cause I was having so much fun. And then I went, it's my fault. And then I had to own it. It's my fault. It's my fault. I put them out there. I put the talk about them in my specials and, yep. and I shared everything about them. And I know, and Georgia, you know, Georgia was the first one to be like, uh, it, it fucking really kind of bummed me out. She was like, I don't want you to, I don't want you to tell anyone where, I, where I'm going to college. I don't want you to tell, I don't want you to come up there. I, 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 I want you to, I kind of want some distance. I want to be myself. Yeah. And you're like, I get it. 
because because it hurts as a dad though I, I say troll and i don't want you to think i'm talking about i'm talking about a, any i i have the ability to be a troll i'm on fucking like I, i'm on na- this neighborhood app um yeah, I'm on, yeah I'm it's on like on a neighbor, neighborhood yeah. app and and because i have no emotional attachment to it and people are very emotionally attached to their neighborhood really yeah i caught myself comment writing a comment that was like just a troll comment like just to fuck with this person like and i was like yeah i was sucks, like steve well no it was like it was this and i i caught myself about to write a comment i'm like what am i doing yeah like and it's because i have no emotional attachment to it so it's almost like a molotov cocktail and then you just walk away and you're like good luck dealing with that and so then i just was like i was like i'm gonna leave the girls be now when i do videos of them i try not i show don't show their faces too much they still i still put them in videos every now and it's then it's tough because they're older it's yeah. fucking tough. I didn't even think about it. Yeah, it's tough because they're all I posted different something. Game. I posted something with me and the girls the other day. And uh, people like commenting on their bodies and shit. No, no, no. People, people are pretty respectful with that. Um, people are pretty respectful. Uh, having said that, having said that, we've had definite issues with Ari. But yes, <laughs> mm. Ari fucking tweeted something horrible about one of my kids once. And Really? Uh, fucking Ari. He's Ari. Whatever. You know? Nah. Uh-uh. If, yeah, it, if it comes to, if it comes to the kids. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, but there, anyway. there's, a, there's a line. I, I get being a troll and, you know, and, like and being negative. Troll. Yeah. And that's fine. But if it's about the kids, you know, but um, that's where I draw the line. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. So, so, but I put a post up with the girls the other day, just randomly of like us doing something. Nothing. Really, honestly, nothing. And I had like fucking 250,000 views on my stories. And I was like, whoa. And I think it's because I haven't showed anything about us. It's something new. People are like, just promo. And I said to Leanne, I said, man, my stories are blowing up right now. They're like 250,000 views, which is a lot for me. And she said, yeah, because you're you're not on the road. I think people are bored with you being on the road. They want to see your regular life. Like your regular life is what you shared. It's how you introduce yourself to Instagram. I've had someone tell me that. Like, it it can't, it might have been Rogan, who's, you know, not the best at social media, but he was like, it can't be just you selling stuff all the time yeah you know and that's the thing to come back to like just promos and i go i don't know i'm 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 in a weird ground where i go i don't know what to share anymore like i'm i'm i, I like i don't it's kind I can't, of a, I, it's I'm kind like, of exhausting right so nice to hear you say that it's exhausting brother it's exhausting because i don't my intention isn't ever to uh represent something that i'm not you i and i I'll, you don't at all i I try not to but like i won't show anything about my house i won't show anything of like i try to hide the girls were like you can never have any videos because we had to move because of this yeah so you get doxxed yeah the nothing about the front of our house nothing about the back of our house you can do inside our house you can't do our rooms you can't do sure like they were like my, my girls were very specific about it it's amazing they've had like a fucking phd oh they have their black belt in social media and how to deal with it yeah they're gonna be great oh I mean, they paid a price. Both have had stalkers. I mean, mean, it's fucking. The world's crazy, man. Did you ever think, did you, do you ever think like, do you ever sit back and think of the journey you've had? No, I suck at it. I'm the worst at it. Literally literally the worst. From from where you started to where you are now is so impressive mm. that it's like a genetic trait that, that only certain people get where it's like the. It's it's like why when you when when they say to you, do you want a um uh a PR lady? You go, no, because if I had gotten a PR lady at the very beginning, they told me none of this was possible. Correct. I remember I had a PR lady one time for Travel Channel, and I said I was going to do Letterman. She said, you let me tell you something. You will actually never get on Letterman. I can promise you that." And I did Letterman, and I went, "Never listen to that fucking idiot." No, yeah, yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, I don't um. Yeah, I never stop and smell the roses. I, ju- I don't believe in odds either. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Ah, you give a fuck. Where are the odds? Because if you, if, if you went based off odds on anything, Division One football, NFL, UFC, comedy, the, the odds are fucking horrible, dude. That's why the odds are that way, you know? Yeah. So I, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I, th- I think maybe that's what triggers a lot of people. Like, obviously, Division One football people just weren't born athletic but it's not for them they can't relate to like hey i didn't you know i can't run fast i'm never gonna do that do you really think people write that off and they go like they can't relate to it like you're not gonna hate on my athletic achievements because you know maybe you played 
fucking basketball in high school, you know, but getting to a professional level, being ranked in the top 10 in the UFC or, you know, was I champ? No, but if you're not even in that, like you can't even touch that. They can't, it's tough. It's tough to hate on that, right? You can't do that. But stand up's a little different. Podcast's a little different. Stand up's different because it's triggering, I think, for some people because everybody thinks they're funny. They always said the funny uncle or I'm the funniest friend in my group. Sure. But it's different to have the balls to get on stage and come up with a set and actually do it. Like it's yeah. a beast, man. You know this better than you. It's a fucking beast. So I think that's where the line gets blurry where people get triggered. Cause they're not gonna be like, oh, well, he did all this stuff, but you know, we we can't run a whatever four, six, forty and do two twenty five, thirty five times. That's not the way we're built. But we are funny, but we've never had the nuts to get on stage. So I think that triggers a lot of people. Cause I've had the nuts to do it. It's that it's, makes sense. No, it it does make sense because you think about high school. Here's where I, I fuck up constantly because I was athletic and I still believe my athleticism is there despite the fact that it is not. Then mm-hmm. I challenge fucking style bender to a fight and I go, Is oh. he? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Did he respond? Yeah. That's my guy. Yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and I was like, Yeah, uh, Tom's working out the details, but I think <laughs> he's going to get, he's going to have to go shot for shot with me. Hilarious. And we'll both get as drunk as I can get. Mm-hmm. And then we'll fight. And then I might have a shot. Oh, <laughs> that why? Well, all right. He doesn't drink. He doesn't no, drink. Yeah. yeah. So, so, but there's also the razor's edge of uh, style bender gets just drunk enough where he's fucking angry. Like, what if he turns into one of those fucking Samoans? L- Loretta Lynn, H- L- L- Lynn's husband drunk. Yeah. yeah and he yeah. just beats me and won't stop. Yeah. 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 I'm not done. There's no way to pull pull, pull him off. He whooping yeah. your ass. Yeah. Um, there's but, that. But I don't think he's that guy. But, but like, I have friendly. delusional thoughts of grandeur athletically where i say like uh and sometimes they come to fruition where i go like i'm gonna it does it i'm running a marathon you know and i go i can do it i know i can do it i know it's just mind over matter i know it's one foot in front of your other foot see i would argue that that's not even athletic i'm not saying you're not athletic no your your mental game is what makes you different as far as stand up everything like your your mental game is what makes you special my mental game is a fucking shit show nah, it's not though because your work ethics and that's those you know what i'm saying your schedule's nuts yeah. but like and i you believe stay, you do so many shows like i do and you stay funny like i don't think people realize how hard that is uh, like to do yeah. show after show after show the and thing- sometimes i get on like you're doing too much dude that was not funny you uh, know like that you know you're just a fly in the wall at this point right now i'm going too i'm moving too fast forward and i'm letting I'm not, I'm not, you, in order to be a great stand up, you got to be all in. You got to be slower about the process of the hour mm-hmm. and you got to be really in the, in the, in the pocket. And right now I'm fucking flying. flying. And I'm just, it's like, it's like, it's too many, it's too many shows that I'm not, I'm just not, not that I'm not present for, but I'm You're just going through the motions, not going through the motions. I'm not going through the motions, but I'm not doing what I did in the past where i recording the set going back no i'm doing thing. all that it's oh. just in the past i maybe in the past i had just had so much wealth of more material mm-hmm. where i could just draw from everything and right now i'm like the first time where i'm like like i, I don't know man hey big boy clicked so fucking easy for me yep. that i was like i don't know I I, I I think it's a level of success too like i look at guys who've been doing it so long that have something to say that also people can relate to mm-hmm. you know what i'm saying because you're you know you're at a level of success now where it's I'm not saying you're not grounded, but you're just you and you've earned every fucking bit of it. But you're just at a level of success where it's tough to pull from things. I think for some people, I'm not saying you, but some comics get to a level where you're like, dude, we can't relate to this at all. I'm talking about private jets and fucking, you know. Oh, yeah. I remember kid. someone telling me like, hey, man, you got to stop putting. I haven't I haven't put a video of me on a private jet up in like uh, like a while. And they're like, you got to stop putting pictures. Of you Who on told a private you jet. That? uh fucking i don't i don't agree with it here here, here's why because well when you first started um and i'm this isn't i'm i'm not clowning but when you first started social media wasn't a thing no see it's a little different with me because social media has always been around so when i was fighting they saw me you know when i got out of fighting i I don't know fucking eight hundred dollars in the bank so it's like from then to now and i was doing a podcast so they've been through this insane fucking journey the ups and downs. Yeah. So they've seen me come from, you know, when I was driving a fucking Prius fight in the UFC to where I'm at now. 
So I do post, you know, my Ferrari. I do post the Porsche or Lamborghinis just because they know, like, I feel like they're proud of it. Does that make sense? No. So, I, it, like, well, my, I the, come that, from a different. No, no, no. That Because Rogan that, would always, like, do not post that stuff, man. I'm like, I disagree, dude. Like, yeah. you, I love you. I respect your opinion to the fullest. But from where I, from my standpoint, I disagree, man. People appreciate the hustle and the, and the, the come up, man. Because they've seen it. So the, so I'm certain if you're listening to this podcast, you've heard me say this, but this is what you're saying. And I, I had to, I had a fan uh, say this to me one time. He came up to me at a New Year's Eve show in, um, in Fort Lauderdale, West Palm, maybe Fort Lauderdale. And he was like, Hey man, I'm a, I'm a huge fan. Hollywood. It's Hollywood. It was the Hollywood, uh, hard rock. Oh, gotcha. And he was like, I'm a huge fan. And I was like, thanks. And he goes, no, I need to tell you what that means. And I was like, no, I got it. And he was like, no, no, no. He's shirtless. He's drunk. He's like, yeah, yeah, he's, he's cool, man. He's yeah, like, yeah. give me a second. And the bouncer was like, I'll get him out. And I was like, no, let him finish. And he very quickly was like, I don't have anything going on in my life. Like, mm-hmm. my life is pretty regular. Like, tonight's my highlight of the month is coming to see you do stand up. It's a big deal. I, I work so that I can enjoy tonight. And I had a great time. And you made me laugh my ass off. I'm adding to the story if anyone's heard the story before. Thank you. And so he, I'm just trying to make it no, make it fun. Give yeah, a little razzle dazzle. Yeah. He lights a cigarette and he looks at me and he says, <laughs> "He's like, uh, he's like, I'm a fan of yours." He goes, "When you succeed, I feel like I chose the right guy." Correct. And I went, "Interesting." He goes, "I don't have a lot of things that I'm fans of, but I'm a fan of yours. And every time you do good, I get to say to my friends, I don't." I don't get it right all the time, but I got it right there. Yep. I, I got a good taste in like, comedy. Look at him, man. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, it, uh, and I think too, because I'm not like I post and ghost. I don't see, I haven't seen comments in probably three years, dude. I yeah. see nothing. I post, when I say I post and ghost, I don't, see, I don't see your stuff. I'm not on there looking. I just, I don't subscribe to it. I see it's likes. so negative. I, I see likes. I don't, I, I don't, I don't see, I'm telling you, dude, I, I see nothing. <laughs> I'll ask my team on the thick boy YouTube. Cause you know, I left showtime for five years. Then start Thick Boy Network. So I know I'll ask, hey, how the subs doing? And they're like, oh, you know, we've been open since January one. We're at 140,000 subs. So it's like, cool, we're going the right direction. Yeah, I, I see nothing, dude. I see nothing. I do. I'm trying to. I'm trying to be honest because sometimes I say that, and then you look obviously, at the phone. obviously, I have seen stuff. Oh, but 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 my point is where I say I've seen nothing. You know, I think that it goes such a long way because we have such a amazing job. We're the most fortunate people in the world oh. where when you're on the road, I'm meeting real people, meet and greets, fans, yeah. I mean, thousands of people, man. So I get real interaction. I get the real feedback of what's going on. If that I makes go, sense. So here's this is my this is my move. I go to a story, right? Mm-hmm. So I go to it, and then I go to view insights. I see how it performed. Mm-hmm. I see how I see how many how many views it got, and then I see how many accounts it reached. And then you look and at then analytics. Out. I look at analytics just to for make that. sure you're on the right track as far as your promo goes. Yeah, and I and I, I like uh, sometimes I will go into the con- I, I I don't I don't deal with Twitter at all. Like I'll uh, I'll go to verified on Twitter and then reply to people that I I must know friends or something yeah and then I go into the direct messages on Twitter but I Instagram has burned me so many times that I look I look at Instagram the same way I look at a scale I go stand on a scale and I go what the fuck am I reading this for yeah I don't need to know what it yeah, is yeah, I know I'm, it's not I'm good, good man. Yeah. yeah and so and by the way I, I don't even get that many negative but like the problem is my direct problem with my comments is um two bears one cave fans what is, do you mean uh. Our, our thing is set up to bust balls. You're the same with King and the Sting. And so, and so sometimes it hurts. Yeah. And so like, and so. That gives them an opening because they're like, I, I, yeah, I think cause because King and the Sting, when we first started, it was 30 minutes of me and Theo ripping on each other to start. Yeah. We'd take a picture. We're on a rotating table and clown each other's outfits. So that, that show start off as a roast show, then turn into what it is now. Yeah. But I think that gave people the green light to be like, oh, these guys are cool to rip on. Which some of them are funny for sure. Some, some of them are funny. And then some, it's like, you thought that was funny, dude? So, well, like, I miss, and really I'm dyslexic. Mean. I'm dyslexic, so I misread them sometimes. Mm. And then I get very worked up. And then I, I, I have, I, one time I showed it to Leanne, and I go, Am I misreading this? And she goes, Yeah, you are. You actually totally are. That's a compliment. And I went, Oh, that's not and, good. Yeah. And so, so I, I, so, but you're we, wired that way. 
I'm wired that way to, to see it as negative. Everybody is, though. And right. Segura was, like, the one he was, like, because when we started the fat shaming thing, he was, like, this is going to be big, man. Like, we need to do more competitions, like, there because we're setting up the joke for them to make. Like, we're setting up the... For them to have fun with it. Yeah, it's... It, it, They're it, in on the joke. It, yeah, it's, it becomes an inside joke. And so the next one we did was... Uh, uh i'm the most racist comic in america and it was it's fucking hilarious but it was it was so bad Mm -hmm. because my special came out and i mean it makes it what's brilliant if you're i I keep using the word troll i don't mean troll i mean i mean it when i mean it but like for our fans they would be like not happy with birch representation in this you like they're mocking the phrase of racism yeah but they're using it as a woke so they're trolling as a woke person. Yes. And then regular people are coming in going, I don't even know what the fuck you're talking about. And then our fans were loving it yes. because they were like, so we got you. You're on the in hook. on it. Now, yeah, yeah, now, yeah, they're in on it and you're not in on it. Yeah. And now and now people are getting upset and fighting. And it was it got so problematic that I was like, like a negative kind of vibe. Oh, yeah, it was like special. it's like if, if you said if I said the joke is Brian loves cheeseburgers and then and then everyone writes in uh man fucking ease up on the cheeseburgers for this next special and everyone's like first of all he's in great shape and you're not and then they go oh shit this guy doesn't get yeah the, he doesn't know it's a joke like yes now i've got him on the hook and that's the narrative on your special yeah and then yeah. all it is all in the comments i mean my managers and agents were like hey man, hey, man we gotta handle hand. this <laughs> and then i was like i was like guys it's an inside it, joke i know and i'm look i'm gonna lose fans from it i mean there will people that are, that discover me and then go it's not what i am into mm-hmm. because of the comment section <laughs> I got it. It's it comes with it's it's part of the territory. How how when you uh you've done so many good specials when you drop a special do you how do you feel about it? Where's your do you have anxiety going into it? You uh, stress or just like yep that's done. I know it's good. No enjoy. I, I I will be more stressed for this next one, only because it's like secret time. I had no frame of reference for what was going to happen with it. Um, I thought hopefully people watch it. Hopefully, I can sell some tickets. Mm-hmm. I, I looked at it this way. So, like, I did uh, uh, the machine, and I could, st- and then that story went viral, and then I could sell out clubs. And I was like, "Cool." I just looked at it. If next year I can just do a little more in tickets than like ten percent more tickets, yeah. Specials are basically it's all it is is really marketing. Yeah, for a fan, it's marketing. Going, I I like his jokes. I'm gonna buy his tickets now, and then hopefully it equals more ticket sales on the road. Yeah, that's the way and- I view specials now. That's the way I look at it. And so I go, I, I was like, uh, then I did Secret Time. And I was like, cool. I hope this does stuff. And I remember I got, re- I, the first day it came out, I started getting recognized on the street in New York. And I was like, that's odd. And then it got really aggressive getting recognized where I was like, wow, I guess it did pretty good. Mm-hmm. And then and then sold out a theater tour. Off that special. Off that special. And that was the first. So let me ask you this, Bert. This is super inside comedy, sorry guys. No. But so you were doing clubs, that special dropped, and then was your team like, all right, man, we think we can go to theaters? Like, how how do you how uh, how did they know? Well, the, the machine story went viral. That was the machine story was the real big tick, okay, yeah, okay. and then that that sold out clubs, and then I did my first theater. I did the Wilbur after that. Love the Wilbur, and uh, and and then and then after Secret Time came out, they're like. I mean, I'll go real inside baseball, but they're Please. like, well, we're going to do theaters, not huge ones, but like 1,200 seats, which is a big, it is a theater. For one night, it's a lot. Yeah. For, you don't realize, because I don't mean to rep. That's a, that's a whole weekend at a club. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, a whole if, weekend at a club a, on a for Wednesday. For a regular club, that's like a, that's a, you know, that's five shows, basically. And you're going, nope, just come tonight. And I think I, in my head, because I can sell at most clubs, I was thinking, well, if I can sell, like I was just in Arizona. I can sell, you know, sell 1,600 tickets. Why don't I just do a theater on one night and do 1,500? It doesn't really work like it's, that. Because not everyone's schedule. Yes. And trust me, when I, I don't mean to slight 1,200-seat theaters. I'm just saying from a person who's... 1,200's from, tough to sell out on one night, too, though. Yeah, yeah. When well, you're first starting in theaters. Fucking 10,000 on a Tuesday is tough also. Fucking, you it's 10,000 tickets on a Tuesday? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I yeah. think it's so funny, I, and maybe it's just the people I'm surrounded with, I don't think people realize how fucking big you and Tom are. Uh, I don't think I, I, I don't uh, think people know how big Tom is. I think I show you. I think I, I, think I, I a, disagree. I don't think I don't think people realize either how how 
either of you guys. But I think it's comics we know, you know, like most comic stuff. Yeah. Some, and then some be like, uh, Burp sells tickets. I'm like, excuse me? Yeah. Do you have any, you know what I'm saying? It's like, what? It's, and then uh, Tom, I'll ask him certain stuff and he'll be like, yeah, I'm in Seattle at fucking, you know, wherever the fucking Seahawks play at or whatever the hell he Tom was. just did, uh, did two shows at uh, where the Bulls play. In he Chicago? Sold out, he sold out two shows in a night. Two shows in one night. I love it. I mean, maybe it was two shows back to back, two nights in a row. But yeah, uh, yeah, it's it's interesting. Um, like I said, not to slight twelve hundred seats, but I remember when we first did it, I was like, "That's great." And then you sell two shows, and then you're like, "Oh wow, I didn't know I could sell those." But when you do twelve hundred seats, the money's not that great. Not at for all for one show. Because meaning rent me, out perspective yeah, wise, yes. Because you want me to take? Because you got to rent yeah. out the theater. And so in clubs, clubs are basically restaurants. Yeah. They make their nut off alcohol sales and food. So you get a much higher percentage at a club than you do a theater. If you sell 200 tickets in a club, you're getting walking away with a pretty good nut because they're getting their nut off their restaurant. But a theater, you have to rent. They don't do clubs. They don't do food and drinks. No. You got to rent out the fucking theater and the staff. So you can half your payoff. You got to rent. You got to rent. I mean, theoretically, I remember one place. You got to rent the staff. You got to rent the curtain. You got to rent the mic. You got to rent the security. You got to rent the stool. And then they take 20% everything. of merch. Yeah. And so, um, but yeah, when Secret Time came out, I could sell, I could sell theaters. And then when Hey Big Boy came out, I it that's when it turned into more arenas. and uh, Insane. Like now we do probably an arena. I feel like we do an arena every week and then clubs, or not clubs, uh, theaters, but Big, bigger theaters the bigger theaters that are less sometimes less personal sometimes mm-hmm. more like a fucking place where you feel like they would have a fucking ted talk yeah um which i don't and i i it's great you know obviously there's certain acts that can do that and it's entertaining you're definitely one of them with your energy and just the way you perform but then there's just as a fan then there's some comics that they might be arena or theater acts and it's just it's a tough show because it's such a big venue they would crush it so much better if it's more intimate. Yeah, well, there's a lot of comics that are just perform better in clubs. I'm mean, a lot of us, all of us do. I think all of us did better in clubs. Mm-hmm. Um, I know for a fact, like sometimes I wonder with my arena shows if they're as good as what it was in a club because in a club, they're they're you in know. a club. I don't have any expectation. I mean, not not any expectation, but it's like it. I I can fly loose and free and have fun and fuck around fuck around get away with a lot more yeah and not at the store but at clubs like at when clubs, i go on the road 100%. like the des moines funny bone yeah you know but, but it's also like yeah, i i picture it like this if you were to go to a concert you go to the weekend's concert and you're fuck you know it's a security your front row but you're still fuck he's up there man yeah. he's still like this not really relatable to celebrity but in clubs it's just i mean basically you to me dude you're it's, right there and it's I think for a fan, it's such a doper experience. Well, it's, I think but it's a fine have, line. Theaters have changed me into a better performer. Is that you have to be right? Uh, yeah, you you learn. You, I, it's funny at times. I feel like I'm, uh, I am legit leaning into my storytelling ability to do a theater where I where I take uh, I, I take liberties with the silence more where I wouldn't in a club. I wouldn't in a club because the pacing in a like club that. it's got to be like da va va da va 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 da like and. Then you do a theater, you're like, especially the bigger, like still at some theaters, like you go to the, you go to the Wilbur and you, it's fucking hammer. You're just fucking, yes. it's that, the, the Wilbur is probably one of the best venues in the country. Seats a thousand though. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, but you go to like a 3,500 seat venue and you, you find that it's more, uh, it's more show. Mm-hmm. Um, let's, let's, let's get back to you. I'm feeling, so inside yeah. baseball. Like, I know we're like, I, but that, like, that dude, that's, you're my fucking favorite to talk to. About. I, could, I could talk you're about this shit all the time. I, you, you said you're not an expert. You're the, you're the guy for it. No, I, I, you're the guy. I like, I, but we're take, similar. Take we're similar. And thank you. We're similar in that. I don't have a problem having a big idea. Like we just started two bears racing. I don't have a problem starting a, having a big idea and moving forward with it. Yeah. Man. And when I saw you do the, uh, the thick boy studios, I was so impressed because I was like, I was like, that is, that is like, this is going to sound like weird, but that's an athlete thought is like, I, I think, like, I think athletes like athletes inherently have to like pressure. And if you don't like pressure, you don't become a successful athlete. 
Interesting. See, yeah, and I. It's why Joe is who he is because Joe ultimately inherently is an athlete. It's why Segura who is who he is. He played fucking college football. What like you, what, did Tom did? Yeah, he was a timepiece back in the day. What? What? Where did he play at? Uh, someplace in North Carolina. It was like. But it's like Division two or three. D two, D three. You're super loose with the term athlete, but I forgive you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, but like, like I'm, but I'm like, real critical of the term athlete. Really, super critical. Really, yeah. Like, you know, it's no shade on your guy. You're like, he's a wrestler. And you went, and yeah. I was, and in my head, I'm like, oh, he probably wrestled at Oklahoma, was on the national team. Because yeah. that's who I'm around. You yeah. Know, I, you know. So I was like, oh, where'd you wrestle? And he's like, Des Moines, you know, high school. High school. And because uh, since I don't know him, I'm like, oh, that's cool, dude. But if I kind of knew him, I'm like, that doesn't count. Yeah. Like, someone's like, oh, I'm a basketball player. I'm like, oh, where'd, where'd you play at? North Carolina? Like, oh, high school. That doesn't count, dude. Yeah. I played fucking baseball in high school. I don't call myself a baseball player. You know what I'm saying? Did you play baseball in high school? Yeah, for like one year. But yeah. it's like, you're not a baseball player. Baseball so, players fucking, you know, I, I tried Mike out. Trout. I tried out, not tried out, but I tried out roughly for this uh, minor league team. Uh, just they were having tryouts, and I went out and showed up, and they're like, How you? Just recently. So it's a couple weeks ago. And uh, I told him, I said, if you sign me, I'll fucking quit my tour, and I'll play with you. <laughs> No way. I said, sign me. And, I, and by the way, I'm good for 10,000 tickets. <laughs> yeah. I'm good for 10,000 tickets in every fucking market. And I'll do stand up at the end of the show. <laughs> they didn't do it? They, uh, I think, you know, I, Did I think. Did you at least get a dope jersey? Uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah I got, my yeah. favorite. So they, but I went out and, and, uh, pr- and tried, like, took some cuts. And, uh, tough sport in the world. Uh, man, well, first of all, I'm, a, I'm the fattest I'd ever been. Yeah. At the time. You're like, I'm Babe the Ruth. fattest You're I'd Babe ever Ruth. been. Uh, you can find it. Put, type in Burt Savannah Bananas. And so. Uh, they have, they have the I, best jerseys, by the way. Minor yeah. leagues have by far the best mascot jerseys. Ever. But minor leagues are killing it. Minor league games are more fun. The Everything about minor leagues. And by the way, this Savannah Bananas thing is a legit fucking brilliant idea. But. um, <laughs> Yeah, that's me up in the left. Yeah. Dude, that's fucking. But. John Crutch. That's you? Yeah. So I told him, I was like, hey, man. Oh, this, this is fucking legit. Oh, you this is there. I've never though. seen. Were, so, were you hitting some? You had to take the jer- Oh, you want the shirt off? Yeah, boy. Let's I was like, oh, daddy. And so I. Uh, but what's funny about all this is that I watched these kids bat, and I was like, I'm not. I'm real. Like I, I'm delusional that I. I really do think I could. I could still play. That's what makes you great, and that's also why you're in arena. Yeah, but like I think, if you had those sensors, you would never be like, what are yeah, you doing this is fucking nuts, dude. I mean, the coach came up to me and he goes, "You took your shirt off and your swing got slower." He was like, "How's that fucking possible?" Well, be cool, man. Yeah, and he was like, "Yeah, there. yeah." I was like, "Easy, man." I was fucking partying until fucking four in the morning last night. <laughs> this podcast is brought to you by Masterclass. My glasses are coming off because I don't really need to read much copy, other than tell you my experience with it. I think it's brilliant. I'm a big cook. I love cooking, and my favorite thing to cook in the world is eggs um and because of that uh, gordon ramsay is one of my favorite chefs he makes the best eggs in town so i took his master class thinking for a second thinking oh wait am i gonna get bogged down with a bunch of recipes but what he did instead was he walked you through how he likes to set up a kitchen how he likes to set up an evening of cooking and it was a real master class on what it's like to be a chef and i thought as a comic there's so much that I would teach you about comedy other than like like telling you how to write a joke or what's funny or telling you what's funny or or that it's so brilliant they have the world's best minds anytime anywhere and at your pace you can learn how to do anything improve any skill you want from the top instructors in the world with over 100 classes from a range of world class instructors of things you've always wanted to do It's closer than you think. It's right at your fingertips. I highly recommend you checking out. Get unlimited access to every masterclass. And as a BurtCast listener, you get 15% off an annual membership. Go to masterclass.com slash BurtCast now. That is masterclass.com slash BurtCast for 15% off masterclass. But but back to your thing about uh, Thick Boy Network. You know, I was with... uh, Showtime for five years mm-hmm. and everything was with them. And they had a production company that would do all my stuff uh, called Malka, who does all the Showtime like documentaries and all their shows and live streams and the Mayweather fights. They're great. Lewis owns them. He's 
one of my closest friends. I still talk to him this day. But probably uh, year four, you know, I'm like, man, I, you know, it's good. But I, and in the the they have all these employees in there, and I'm I'm seeing how they're working the editing bays and all that stuff. And um, I don't know. I it was just, you know, probably. And I gave Showtime a heads up. It wasn't like hey, see, and they're like, what the fuck? Because you know the way these big networks work is once you're on your last year of your contract, they don't want to wait till the very end. They want to figure something out now. So yeah. they sent me an offer, you know, best offer I've had in my life as far as m- money wise. And, you know, just stability, five year, another five year offer. And I was just thinking to myself, um, you know, I, I feel like I could do this. I feel like I could do it. I see what they're doing. And I looked at the numbers because I would have to split everything with them. Right. Yeah. I'd have split all the advertising and everything with them. And it's all on their page, on their YouTube. I didn't even have a YouTube page at the time. I've never had a YouTube page. Theo makes fun of me all the time. He's like, how the fuck? Do you still have a YouTube page? No, I have Thick Boy now, yeah, which yeah, I yeah, am. Yeah. yeah. He's like, how the fuck you been doing this this long? You know, I'm like, I always had Fire the Kid or King the Sting or, yeah. you know, Showtime, Below the Belt, but never my my own that I run. So I, I never had one. So I went through the numbers. Like, I feel like maybe not in the first year, I'll make as much as Showtime would pay me, but- I do own everything. That was the deal. I did. So I created food truck diaries with them, um, flashback fight nights, and then the shop show, aka formerly known as Below the Belt. Yeah. It's like, I just feel like I could do this all myself if I, if I had the right team. So I just started trying to figure out the right team, looked at the studio space, and then called them. And I said, Hey, this is how much I can make in a year minimum doing it on my own, not sharing with you guys. And he was like, Yeah, dude, we can't, we can't afford that. We love you, but we can't afford that. Yeah. And I was like, I just got to go on my own, man. He was like, completely get it. He was like, hopefully the door's still open if we ever want to work there. I'm like, dude, you guys have been great to me. I would love to work with you again. I just want to try this on my own. It's and the so smartest I did it. move, man. I called Tom. I called, you know, because Tom has, you know, was it your mom's house? Network? I don't think yeah. he wants to call a network for whatever reason. But definitely a network. Studio. It's he stu- wants to call it a studio. Want, yeah. He likes the idea that he's producing as opposed to just it's still a network. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, that's yeah i guess yeah you could think boy studios yeah i get what tom says that i called him and tom was just like yeah, it's tough man he's like he's like what you're gonna learn is you know unless you're involved with the show the shows just aren't doing the numbers that you need to cover your nut he's like so it's really tough to figure out original programming that you're gonna make you know the money off that you expect and the numbers you expect Well, that's the thing you know that's the thing that with a lot of podcast studios is they go you know Hey, we bring you on, and then you we need you to help our younger acts. And you're like, I, there, it's got to be good. The yeah. only reason people tune into a podcast is if it's good, correct? And you know, it's given me the opportunity to give guys like Chappelle his own podcast, Mark Harley, who I absolutely love and adore his own yeah. podcast, and then do a lot of other things. Like we have the Thick Boy album dropping that you're on. April yeah, was 28th. that Little Brows? Yeah, Little Brows. So you know it's given me the opportunity to also you know create fucking music albums and the first album we did with him just went uh fucking whatever platinum on spotify he just got this big plaque i posted really? on you all and you know he's this great kid man so for me i think you know like you you've helped me out so much i've talked about it at length you know when i was I, and really it's the only stand-up that i have online is uh that this is not happening at Comedy Central, which you helped me out tremendously with. It was but, one of my favorite things. Dude, but it's like, you helped me with that. But when I got into this, you would think comics are, would be selfish and, you know, and territorial. But between you, Rogan, Diaz, Segura, Dalia, Brian, Theo, like, I have so many great friends who help me out in so many ways. I'm like, dude, now you pay it forward. Like, I, I'm not at your level, but I can definitely help some guys. Yeah. So, like, on the road, you know, with Chappelle Lacey, who I've had on the road two years now, and he's on fire and the kid. Chappelle, and I told Chappelle, I said, the goal of you come being my feature is you get too busy for me. And you, you're you booking your own fucking dates. I can't wait for the day when you come to me and go, I can't do that date, man. I got my own headline gig. I, I've said that. That's, I've said that. Well, that's happened. He's too busy for me. Really? He doesn't tour with me anymore. He, he popped up in Phoenix. Other than that, he hasn't been with me in probably four or five months. He's headlined his own shows, man. Like yeah. Chappelle's crushing it, man. And that's how this should work. So now Chappelle's moved on. Now I have David Lucas featuring. David David's Lucas a fucking, fucking monster. You've used David. I, I worked with them. And, David's uh, my guy. David has his own show on my network. 
Oh, really? Yeah. Where he just roasts fans. They they FaceTime in. He lights them the fuck up. It's once a month. He's great. He's the best. I told you, we went and did making together. That's Maybe we did a little he's bit. He's from of there, work. right? Yeah. He loves His whole family you. came out. We well, we went ended up watching Medea together. They had a fucking fish fry. It was fucking awesome. David's so funny. He's and awesome. Such man. a good fucking dude, man. Yeah. Or anybody who's with me, they're such good people. So for David, that's what I want for him. He's the next one. And then uh, Darius Bennett. I have all these just monsters, man. Like the show is just monsters. So I think if anything, the network allows me to do that type of stuff. So, you know, I'm stoked about it. it and Tom did say this. He's like, it's a lot of work, man. He's not lying, man. It's a lot of work. I have fucking 12 employees. Like being a boss is weird. I suck at firing people. Like Yo, I just keep them on. Wait, Tom's wait so too good long. at it. Tom's a savage. He's so good at it. I didn't realize, like, I didn't see that side of Tom, right? Because me and him are always fucking around doing podcasts right in the green room. I didn't see it until, uh, you know, I brought my, you know, I have a crew like you guys. I brought my camera guy to document me doing uh, Two Bears, One Cave when you were shooting your movie. Yeah. And my camera guy comes in. My, you know, I don't know. He said, fucking. Kevin Tom was, no, absolutely not. Nope, not happening. And I was like, who, uh, Tom, who are you talking to? He's like, camera guy, not filming here, dude. He's like, absolutely not. And I was like, oh, damn, look at Tommy. I respect it. Yeah. I don't have the balls to do what, that. What did, we, what did he have a problem with? I think just showing the show and like showing like the address, which I completely, we'd never show the address. Yeah. So I'm not fucking an amateur. No, yeah, that, yeah. But, but I was just like, oh, like I respect that so much being like, God, I need to get more like that. Oh, I'm, I'm too much like, like I'm dude, bro. We I have guys on my staff where they're like Milton, where you'd be like, What would you say you do here? They're just like chilling and vaping in the corner getting paid. Yeah. But no. I but I like them at PS people. Oh, my my bus driver pulled a gun on me one time and uh and Tom He's, was he didn't fire him. No, I still work with him. We just celebrated his birthday last week. <laughs> you got him a gun? Yeah. <laughs> no, I bought him some shoes. <laughs> I'm just when it comes to that, I'm just you know I'm 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 bad at it, man. I'll call my dad because my dad's been a business owner you know forever, and he's like, Brandon, I'm fucking telling you, dude, you need to nip this in the ass now." I'm like, "I know, but he, you know, he has a mortgage. He has rent. He goes, it's it's not your problem. Like it is though. Yeah, it yeah. is though. Man. Oh, it totally is. I have I I have a, I have a cameraman who is in all my videos. You'd think he would be on the other side of the camera, but he's like, "Hold this, I want to do it." And then all of a sudden, I'm filming Come on him. in, man. Dude, I've had, I had a, uh, a situation a few weeks ago where I kept warning this kid, hey, man, if you don't get better, we, we have to let you go. We have to let you go. And then finally, I woke up that morning. I was like, today's the day. I, I got to let him go. I'm going to give him his two weeks notice. Tell him I appreciate the work. You're going to do this, Brendan. And I go, hey, can I talk to you, dude? Come in the office. He comes in there. By the end of it, I think he had a promotion. <laughs> <laughs> he's like he's like pitching himself i was like that sounds pretty good dude. yeah yeah you got it man no yeah it. we can afford that yeah and then we walked out and then my guy's like so you do i'm like no he's actually your boss now yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like I'm, i just saw I, you know there's things i'm good at and i'm savage with and there's some things where i'm just too too friendly man i've never been good at breakups like i was just i was just drag it on oh i just treat them like shit until they break up with me oh I'll, I'll just deal with it Oh, I'd literally, just and be miserable and be like, "No, it's cool, man." No, I I remember one time I dated a chick and and I went to yoga and first time I ever went to a yoga class and the guy was like, uh, was like, we're doing child's pose at the end or whatever, and he's like, "All right, think of the thing you don't like in your life right now." We do this every day. It's my first class. You thought of her? I thought of her immediately, and he goes, "You can fix that." And I was in my head, I'm like, "No, I can't." Nah, I can't. And he goes, "Yes, you can." You don't know this struggle. He's like, "You can." And if you got a problem fixing it, you come talk to me. I'll help you fix it. And I was like, you know, I'm going to go up to the guy. I walked up. And he was like, so what's up? I said, uh, the problem thing? He goes, yeah, what is it? And I said, it's a chick. And he goes, uh, break up with her. And I went, ah, yeah. And he goes, no, no, it's really, really easy. He goes, give me your phone. He gives me a phone. No. He goes, what's her name? And I told her his name. He searches. And he goes, all right. I'm guessing and he has his shirt off at he goes, this time. He's got his shirt off and he's covered in tattoos. Fuck yeah. And he's like, it's ringing. Tell her you want to go to dinner with her tonight. I was like, what? He goes. Tell her you want to go to dinner with her tonight. I was like, hey. I was like, what are you doing? She's like, nothing. I said, you want to go to dinner? And he was like, and she was like, yeah. And I was like, great. All right, come by my place around 7. She's like, great. So I hung up, and he goes, decide right now that you're breaking up with her, and you know tomorrow's going to be that much better. And I went, I'm going to do it. And like a fucking dickhead, we sat down for dinner, and I broke up with her before they even ordered drinks. What? I broke up with her so quick. And then you just, you just couldn't wait. 
I couldn't it's wait. Like Christmas morning. Yeah, and I was like, I was like, I want to break up. It's over. She's like, what the fuck? And this lady comes up and she goes, Hey, can I get you guys cocktails? I was like, We haven't even ordered yet. Oh, this is gonna be a long fucking dinner, dude. I thought this was gonna go the other way. <laughs> Same with my girlfriend in high school. We we're together forever. We we're going to college, and she was so dramatic. So my dad goes, So do it in like a public space where she can't freak out. <laughs> do it in a public space. Yeah, what and I go, that, that and my dad's like one of the smartest people I know. I go, That's such a good idea, pops. So we go to P. Oh, I'll never forget this. We go to PF Chanks. <laughs> we go there and we're like talking. She's like, "You're right, Tom." I'm like, "I'm good. I'm good." <coughs> and then I order the orange chicken or whatever, and she orders, you know, the fuck the sesame chicken. And then we're waiting for it to come, and I just go, um, "I can't do this anymore." She's like, "What?" I'm like, "We just, you know, we we gotta stop this, dude." She creates such a scene. It's so much worse because you're oh, in public. Oh, my space. dad was so far off, dude. She yeah. goes what i'm like whoa 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 and she's crying crying everyone's like what's going on i go whoa no i'm fucking with you i'm fucking with you i stayed with her for another year and a half it did not work dude i stayed with her a year and a half miserable year and a half oh she's like this is a terrible fucking joke i'm like I'm, my, I, you know, I'm fucking my dad told me to do it my, my dad, dad told me yeah, yeah. to be it's a funny ter- way to start he doesn't know us though you yeah know? he doesn't know my dad yeah. Doesn't know. yeah no we're fine babe love you oh yeah. i could not oh i I've... saved it by dropping the l-bomb for the first time I'm like no, no i love you i'm lesbian? just fucking with you yeah <laughs> you called her a lesbian <laughs> yeah you're a lesbian. Yeah. You're a lesbian. Ah, oh, God, it was a fucking nightmare, dude. The, I thought that's where you were gonna go. No, no, I. You actually, so you're better than me. I know. I, I'm. I'm. Uh, I, I'm not good at. I've never been good at. Uh, at women. I've never been good. I fall in love very easily, and me I too. have intimacy issues. And hmm. so, like, I don't. Like, I, I want to find one person that I want to be with. That person. That's it. And yes. then. And then I get very hurt if they give attention to other people. Sure. Like, I'm very sensitive about that shit. Um, it's funny. I, I look at Leanne and I go, uh, like, the other day, I was walking down the beach. And Le- Leanne is, I'm not talking shit about my wife. I'm just being honest. The older she gets, the more she starts looking like her grandmother. Like, the more you can see, like, sure. like yeah. she'll, like, her body posture, like, she'll do this thing where she, like, almost, like, like her butt sticks out yeah and she'll be like leaning over and i was walking down the beach yesterday and i said uh i go who is that old lady and then as i got closer i saw Leanne. i go oh that's my old lady and i got so excited because i go in my head i'm like i'm not going anywhere she's not going anywhere and i I, we've got a, a relationship where it just is like uh i don't know it's like I would have never thought it would have worked when I was younger. So when I was younger, I needed, I needed, I mean, I couldn't see a flaw. If I saw a flaw in a woman, I would be like, I'm done with her. Yeah. Oh, her right. ankles. What, what the fuck? Uh, like, again. Yeah. But you're and, young. Yeah. And then That's now, fine. now I kind of, I don't know. It's, it's a bizarre. What well, goes deeper than the physical, right? I guess, but it's almost like, um, like I never saw that coming. Like, and then I, I wonder if I, I could have given that opportunity to other girls I dated. Mm. That and the other thing is, I was thinking about this. This is such a good premise, but it doesn't, it's not working. Had I had a phone to distract myself with, I probably would have been in every relationship I was ever in, in uh, forever. Because. Oh, disagree. Just the idea that you can go like, you can go like, huh, what are you saying? Yeah, whatever. I don't need to talk to this person. And then just get on your phone. No. And thumb be- through. No, dude. Because you have more opportunity on your phone. Right for what because it because back in the day like oh was, oh because of tinder uh, tinder or grindr or whatever. instagram grinder bumble where the fuck you're into i never got i yeah i never i know ne- i don't never use my phone for that obviously but i've never no, but used- i'm saying but if you were younger this is what the kids do so now it's like they're kind of fucked because there's oh, so much opportunity i see what you're saying is you know that, what i'm saying yeah I, if i had my phone i would have been swiping i heard someone tell a story the other day about they had had sex with a guy that they met on tinder and as they were coming out of the bathroom, he was back on Tinder looking for the next one. Savage. I mean, sad. This these young kids fucking sucking vape. They're just fucking it's fucking euphoria, f- dude. I've never seen euphoria. Is it good? Uh, as because we're older, it's good. But I have a whole bit on it how it's ruining the fucking kids, man. It's nuts. Euphoria is nuts. Hang on, Steve Byrne. Sorry, buddy. I'm podcasting right now. I tried to type that to you and it came out wrong. Steve's a nice guy. Yes, he's a great guy. <clears throat> the- yeah, but, but back to our wives. And, uh, I was in Mexico with my family, and we had our own, like, own little I think I saw that vacation. Pool. Yeah, and my, sometimes my girl come out in bikini. You know, her measurements are this, better than uh, Meg the Stallions. Like, she's fucking 
bodied up, dude. Yeah. And I was like, Jesus Christ, man. And yeah. sometimes I just find myself like, fuck sakes. <laughs> and then her mom's a dime. I'm like, mama, because you know, she's like my mom. I'm like, mama, yeah. you can't you can't wear a two piece. You gotta wear one piece. Just blowed ass. Really? Fuck. Oh, dude. Nutsos. I remember, I think I remember I remember when you guys got pregnant. Mm-hmm. Cause I remember asking her about you. Know, you said she's an alien. Yeah, her and I was like, stu- her genetics really? are stupid. She'll diet for like a week and just like fucking. Sh- I'm like, what the fuck? Oh yeah. Like, yeah, I've yeah. been on carnivore for, uh, shit, damn near f- since November. I think I've been on carnivore. Really? I mean, I've had some cheats. Like when I do that food truck show, like I did a food truck yesterday with Patty Pimlet, oh, and I'll yeah. cheat on the food truck because I can't be like carnivore only. You know, yeah. then the show's like, what the fuck? So I'll cheat uh, twice a month. But usually on that, if I'm on the road at JT Wings in Phoenix, my favorite wings in the world. Uh, but other than that, I'm, I'm at home. It's strict. Only, only, only steak, dude. See, I'm down like 24 pounds. For real? Yeah. You look, you look lean. Yeah, I'm in, I'm in good shape, man. I wish I, could. I run. Oh, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. No, please. You got to run those tough mutters with me, dude. The thick mutters. Dude, I ran the you first. I ran the first it. tough mutter. Like the one like of the, the first generations. They had one in Jersey in 2000 like eight i think will you type in the i went when first tough mutter first came out i did one of the first generations of the tough mutter and then i've done the spartan race i've done i've done all of them the the new tough mutter we call them thick mutters right because yeah. i have my own like uh heat this was i mean th- we did the the did you do 12 the fi- miles uh you did the 15k no 12 miles oh so now there's they only offer well there's the ultra tough mutter which is like 24 hours which no i'm not no. doing that i don't want to die and then there's 15k 10k and 5k so for thick mutter we offer a 15k and a 5k a 5k is i could do if i'd love to do a 5k you uh, dude i'm fucking telling I, you, I love those you and me together with mark harley would the that's the thing people think they got to be like fucking you know in michael phelps shape dude it's just the it's just so much fun man i love them it's I, so fun I, i've done You're busy as fuck though, let man. me tell you something i've done the the great inflatable race i've done the spartan race i've done the i've done the tough mutter i've done i've done every because we used to do them for birth to conquer okay any one we did i and i but the tough mutter we did was half a marathon it was in jersey and it was a and i got zapped with the electrics and the nuts i hate that. what is it about those that make those enjoyable because i enjoyed the fuck out of it oh you're a sociopath not is me it, dude i fucking hate it hate really it, hate it it's a and you I, did it with two blown out hamstrings though. yeah they and they think it's a joke like oh you know i know you don't like them. like no you don't understand man i i didn't get sleep last night because i'm thinking about getting fucking shocked i can't stand it yeah i i blew out my hammies Two weeks before the last stuff, racing month. Chappelle, racing fuck around with Chappelle. He was like, "I'm fashion." I'm like, "Guarantee you're not." And then fucking Brian's like, "Warm up." I'm like, "Do you ever seen a cheetah warm up?" And then I fucking blow out both hammies because I'm th- <laughs> 38 years old. Blew yeah. up both my fucking hammies. I've been there. And then Tough Mudder was like, "Dude, what are you doing?" I was like, "I'll still make it because I've been contracted." I was like, "No, I'll still make it." And I did everything my. I'm talking. I went full blown Alex Rodriguez. I yeah. Like, I went dark side like. What's gonna get me to at least be able to jog in two weeks? It got, it got weird. Really, it got weird, dude. I'm like, oh, I wish I had this stuff when I was fighting or playing football. Really? Oh yeah, it got weird. And does it does does it help? What? <laughs> really? Yeah, dude. I ran 15k with two blown out fucking hammies. Imagine dude, if I was at full strength. I just did stem cells the other day. You like it? Uh, I did. My cardiologist told me that they don't ever want me doing it again. Would you do it at? uh in austin in my arm uh in your my shoulder elbow, where oh I, yeah yeah i, I had yeah. surgery makes sense and uh and i've always been conscious of how weak my arm is now? since the surgery yeah and and then after that i was like i'm i'm feeling good like i'm not i'm not as concerned i don't know if it's psychosomatic or if it's like a placebo no i mean effect. there's some you know the the biggest boys in the world who get paid to compete are doing stem cell yeah and you know rogan fucking he swears by he's Scrooge it. McDuck. And he swears by stem cell. For yeah, reason. I, I blew up both my hamstrings at a at a Christian camp, uh, on a blob, and I kicked them out. Like I, I went. It hurts so fucking bad. It's so fucking. I thought a bad. sniper went. Pff, pff. It's and it, it's immediate. Like you're like, oh, I'm not, I'm not using these legs. Oh, I couldn't move. I literally, they had to carry me into the studio. I was so upset, man. Really. 
And it's like, and for what, dude? What are you doing? Yeah. I was so mad at myself. You fucking idiot. And we have all these shirts, these thick mutter shirts we sold. All these people were expecting. We sold over that one. We sold over 400 tickets to run with me. So really? it's like, you got to go, dude. So I, yeah, I was just so. And you do your own, your own heat. My own your heat own called day. the thick mutter. No, it's during the same day. Like yeah. it's that Saturday when they have all the other heats. Just, uh, I think the promo code was thick. You get 10% off and then you get to run with me. So it's, I'm telling you, and we've done three of them now. And it's like a lot of the same people show up and then it just, it's spreading like wildfire. Like, so where's the next last one, one was doing? 500. Next one, so we just did one in San Bernardino. San Bernardino. Right? Yeah, we did it there at the Glen Helen Raceway. That's my favorite track. And then uh, I think the next one we're trying to decide now, it might be in Chicago in August. Really? But it's, just, it, it's I'm telling you, the, if you go through that, you know, it takes whatever, two and a half, three hours. It's just like. When you're done. As a team, it just you're just going through the shit, man. We're talking and it's just bonding. And what's dope about, like I was just in Phoenix. I have a bit where uh, on kids I asked, are there any parents in the crowd? Just to feel how, dude, and for the last, I don't know, six months when I go, is there any parents in the crowd? I can tell like my fan base, my audience is growing up as I am. Like yeah. they have kids and there's parents. So the material is relating to them, yeah. you know? So it's like, you've got this tough mutter. There's so many dads, man. And my, oh, yeah. my son would do the race before me. And he's such a little fucking, I know everyone says their kids athletic. Sure. My kid at the Tough Mudder, that kid, it's supposed to be uh, one and a half miles. So I told him, I was like, dude, you know, study. Don't go all crazy because it's just energy for days. Yeah. So he does it, right? Blows all the fucking kids out of the water. He's all muddy. But there's no, like, official at this, the finish line. So he does it again. He laughs the kids. And then I'm like, how many fucking times are you supposed to go around? He does it again. So you're, what, that, that's three. So four and a half miles. Yeah. And he's, he's like, dad, do I just keep going? I'm like, I don't know, buddy. You've beat everybody. And I go, hey, I find the fish. I go, hey, who's uh, doing the finish line? And he goes, oh, I am. Are they done? I go, I don't know how many times I'm supposed to go around. He goes, once. I'm like, oh, my kid went around three times. Like, what the fuck? How old is he? Like, He's five. He's like, that's nuts. He's dude. like, that can't be safe. I'm like, he wants to keep going, dude. He's like, no, 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 no. We're, we're done. He's just a savage. Is it, what's it like raising boys? Nothing better because I feel like... Uh, through my life experience, I, and because I've got all this knowledge from people like you and Rogan, you know, everybody in my life and Todd Feldman, my dad, like I have so much knowledge to give another young boy. Like, I feel like it's what I'm meant to do. Like I, you know, I've never, I've never canceled or showed up late to a show ever in my life, man. Yeah. I pride myself on it. I've never, nothing, never. I'm supposed to do a uh, moon tower comedy festival. First time headline of comedy festival. Big deal for me. I was supposed to open up uh, Cap Cities. So about a week and a half ago, because uh, Cap Cities, I'm sure you've done it coming up, right? Yeah. People love that club in Austin. Uh, new owner, the guy who owns the Helium, owns them now. He Mark. Put, it's, it's, it's a new location. Yeah, Mark. So I was going to open up the first weekend, opening weekend for Moon Tower Comedy Festival. I'm like, yeah, cool. I'm not a big fan of festivals. I don't know if you came up doing festivals. No. I came up different where I was already kind of selling tickets, you know, blessing yeah. and curse, but I didn't need a festival. I wasn't a festival comic. I'm, ever. Not, I'm not a festival guy. Like my agent would go, oh, it's about the hang. I'm like, you ever met me, man? The hang. <laughs> I'm good, dude. I do my job. I go back to Airbnb and order good food. Like that's yeah. all I want to do, dude. So he goes, well, you'll do cap cities, but it is a festival. So if you don't want to hang, you're fine. I'm like, all right. And he knows I hate festivals. I've done JFL and moon tower a bunch of times. It's just not my thing. So I agreed to it. Reluctantly, I agreed to it. And Cap City, they didn't know this. And, you know, it's none, no one's fault. They go, uh, they give me ticket sales. I'm like, I'm going to sell that bitch out easily. Two weeks before, this is going to be fucking great. Um, let's add shows or let's do something. And then, uh, I don't know if Rogan's talked to you about this open his club. The inspections out there and like to get licensed is tough. Really? People learn the hard way. It's tough, tough. Really tough. So they go into the new Cap Cities and I guess there's something wrong. And they go, you got to fix this. And Mark goes, yeah, cool. I will right, we'll fix it fucking in an hour. They go, no, no, no. If there's an issue with the building, you have to wait 30 days prior to opening. So they can't open. So they looked at my ticket sales. And they went, well, he's selling a lot of tickets. We can add shows. Let's just move them to the Paramount Theater. So my agent calls me, goes, hey, tells me about the whole, you know, Cap Cities. Goes, it's not going to open. So they want to put you in the Paramount Theater. I go, How many seats? I think, whatever, 1,400. 
And I go, oh, that's where Schultz shows special. Rogan performs there. Whitney Shutter special. Like, it's a dope venue. Let's do mm-hmm. it, man. Just move all the tickets over there. So they do that. But then remember, I was supposed to do the Thursday, Friday for doing shows. And then, you know, and Saturday at Cap City. But now I'm just doing one show on Saturday. Just the one show. And I'm not a festival guy. I'm not going to bounce around and do the hang on Thursday, yeah. Friday. And then uh, I never spend more than one weekend away from my kids. So the way my my schedule set up is I'll do a date begin the month week off maybe another date week off every I'll do at least two dates a uh, a month and then maybe a third but I never want to be away from my kids that long I can't do it yeah so with this festival um I would have left for Austin tomorrow and then next week my special drops I'm in Austin again doing Rogan I go from Rogan to New York so then you're looking at multiple weekends and weeks away from my kids I can't do it really can't do it so i called my and you know like I told you can't you, do it as in it doesn't I fuck you physically up physically can't i will get sick i won't give you a good show if i don't see my kids i can't do the show dude Jeez. i physically can't i will get sick dude. if i if that if that i don't think i'd have a career if i felt like that like i fucking have spent so much time away from my kids i just kissed them goodbye this morning and said uh i'll see you in a month really yeah and yeah tom this is what's weird uh, i mean Bert, this is what's weird and i'm not i'm not trying to make you feel bad yeah they couldn't offer me enough money to leave my kids for a month there's not you you if you said hey i want you to be the next fucking spider-man yeah but you got to go to fucking bulgaria for four months and your yeah. kids can't come your boy's not the next spider-man i physically can't do it dude uh, yeah. i can't i'm i i you know i what? will hate myself i, I hate, will get well, i hate myself I will get, yeah it's yeah i all, mean it's, it's, it's we not all like do. it's not like i like it no there's it's regret just, but look at the life you built for him yeah but it's weird right there, it's, 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 a, it's, it's a double-edged it's, sword well see i also i had kids when i was broke so it was kind of like it was came with the territory of like i remember being on a plane complaining to a dude and he was like uh he was like hey man i'm in the military and like i went to afghanistan <laughs> for two years yeah for two years mm-hmm. and he was like so uh, you got this yeah and i was like okay i remember i remember chris hardwick one time said don't you think it's irresponsible that you had kids that was and i'm not trying to he wasn't being shitty we were just talking and he but and he wasn't like saying don't you he was like saying like do you find it to be irresponsible that you had kids but you're not there at home enough with them and i went yeah i, I mean i do but at the same time i was like that's our job like everyone's different yeah i mean I, and i'm not saying this to that in any facts to make make you feel no 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 no. look i've come to terms everyone's different everyone's different dude like i I know friends who you know they they, maybe if i had boys i would have been around more (laughs) yeah (laughs) no i mean they have their mom you know it's so funny i i it's funny the dad i thought i was gonna be i wasn't like i thought meaning I i thought i was gonna coach fucking softball i thought i was gonna be i thought i was gonna my dad coached everything and the first softball practice I went to, I had real issues with the other dads. I was like, you guys didn't play competitive sports. And they're like, no, no, I played a little <coughs> T-ball. Did you play? I was like, I got recruited to go to college. I play. I, I walked on over Florida State and I walked off. But still. I go, but, but like, like I, I, had, I had a good skill set and I taught kids growing up. Like that's how I did for summer is we'd teach, Coach Kent would have a camp and we'd teach kids. We mm-hmm. as high schoolers we come out and teach kids, so we got a bunch of the fundamental drills. So like I remember the very first day, one of George's first softball practices, they were the coach tried to change her swing, and I went whoa 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 whoa, don't touch your swing. Your swing's perfect, and he was like no, yeah, it's dicey. And I was like and I was like oh I, I'm his name is Coach, and I was like hang on, he's like well you know I'm not comfortable. What we do is we like to put our arms like this, and I was like no no, no I understand that you, <coughs> you're replicating what you saw in a book. What I'm telling you is i've lived this i've I've lived this life and i remember one of the dads said your daughter hits the ball so hard your daughter hits the ball so far i said she's breaking her wrists a lot of kids aren't breaking their wrists He was like what's that i said bring your daughter out so we go out to the thing after practice and i said uh one of the big drills we i would do with children to teach them how to break the wrist have them throw the bat Mm -hmm. if you could throw the bat at second base throw the bat to home to the pitcher's mound throw the bat to the pitcher's mound just throw it muscle memory it just it just teaches you how to teaches you how to break your wrists yep and so um 
And he was like, for real? And I was like, oh, yeah. And Isla was a uh, switch hitter. And he's like, Isla, Georgia, Georgia is, this is so frustrating to me. Georgia quit softball. I don't know why. She quit softball. I think it was a fucking power, power struggle just recently, this last year, two years ago. She was leading the county in fucking bases. And Shit. No, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Let me take that back. She was leading her team in batting average. Still? Leading the team in her batting average Baller. as a sophomore. Nuts. And she quit. She, was she like, just didn't like it. She goes, I, I don't care. She was a commitment. She goes, I don't care about it. I don't That's, care about it. I'm fine with that. And then she played golf and then played the cross. She loves the cross. But... She was so good. And Isla would go up and bat left-handed and bat right-handed. And the coach, the coaches couldn't wrap their head around a kid who would decide as they got to the plate what yep. they would hit. Yep. And that's so fucking Isla. And and it's also your coaching, you know. I uh, know it, it was that she, it was frustrating when she was a kid. I'd go, we go out in the front yard and she'd just go left-handed. I go, baby, you're right-handed. Yeah. She goes, I want to hit this way today. And you just go, ah, fuck it. If it's not fun, they're not going to do it. Yep. And just let her do her thing. <laughs> but yeah, but yeah, I made a lot of compromises as a dad to make sure that um, <clears throat> to make sure that there was food on the table. We were talking about this driving around. Really? Yeah. I love Shopify. Shopify gives entrepreneurs the resources once reserved for big businesses, so upstarts, startups, and established established businesses alike can sell everywhere, synchronize online and in person sales, and effortlessly stay informed. Scaling your business is a journey of endless possibilities. Believe me, when we started this podcast, we started selling one shirt, the machine shirt, then the birdcast shirt, then the mugs, then the fucking posters, then pajamas. I mean, Jesus Christ. I am, and we're not stopping there because my wife's in charge of everything. And because success is a million milestone on a forever evolving path. I love how Shopify has the tools and resources that make it easy for any business to succeed from down the street to around the globe. Like mine, Shopify powers millions of businesses from first sale to full scale. Reach customers online and across social networks with an ever-growing suite of channel integrations and apps, including Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, Pinterest, and more. Synchronize your online and in-person sales. Gain insights as you grow with detailed reporting of conversion rates, profit margins, and beyond. More than a store. Shopify grows with you. This is possibility. Powered by Shopify. Go to Shopify.com slash Birdcast all over case for a free 14-day trial and get full access access to Shopify's entire suite of features. Grow your business with Shopify today. Go to Shopify.com slash Birdcast right now. Shopify.com slash Birdcast. Yep, I, I think back to sports and kids too. It it is tough because uh you know my son's in jiu-jitsu. I've done jujitsu for 15 years. It's got to be so fucking I've, hard. I have a black belt, right? Yeah. From uh, Henzo Gracie Black Belt from Amal Easton. And I've, I've competed against the very best in the world. I've been around the sport. So unless I walk into like Bouchesha or uh, Henzo Gracie or certain gyms, I'm usually going to be the most educated on that matter. It just is what it because I've put the time in. Yeah. So it's tough to. Yeah, it's it's a weird dynamic, but um, we go now. We go in, and the, the coach is great. But I will always, I'll never correct the, never will overstep my boundaries. But I'm I'm pretty loud. I'm pretty loud. And uh, there's a video I struggled with posting. I sent to my friends. I'll send to you. I I wanted to post it, but I didn't because we'll get done with the class, and I'll just teach uh, Tiger simple wrestling drills: single leg, double leg, because these kids are all judo based. And uh, I'll teach them certain, like guillotine stuff like that. And we'll, we'll, you know, re- do repetitions every day, you know, at home and whatever. And he's really good at it. And he excels in wrestling. And there's this kid in the class, probably 11, big kid. He's the bully of the class. You know, the one kid, just nobody, like when they pair him up, they're like, oh, fuck. every parent's like, Jesus yeah. Christ. he's just a big kid and just not fun and kind of an asshole. And uh, they pair uh, Tiger up with him. And I'm like, motherfucker. And then they ask that kid, or I'm sorry, before they pair Tiger up, they ask that. They'll let the, they'll, every now and then go, whatever, Frank, I don't know his name. They're like, Frank, who do you want to go with? And he's like, look around. He goes, oh, I want to go with Tiger. He's the easiest. Dude, I was sitting there. I was like, oh, did something triggered me? And I just, I went out loud. All the parents, I went, it's dead quiet. I go, oh, hell no. Go, Tiger, get over here. And you can tell everyone's like, what the fuck? I go, dude, 
if this fucking kid takes you down, submits you, we are not getting ice cream. <laughs> I said, and he loves the ice cream over there. Yeah. It's his favorite thing. And he only gets ice creams if he gets 10 takedowns in a class. And I go, dude, if this, you know why he picked you, T? He goes, why? I go, he thinks you're the easiest one in the class. And you're definitely not. But he picked you out of everyone because he thinks this is going to be easy for him. I said, you give him hell, dude. You might get taken down. You give him hell. He's older. I know he's been doing this longer. I get all that. And that's scary. But you give it everything you got from him. You got it? And he goes, got it, dad. So the coach goes, all right, whatever, Frank T, uh, go at the end because they know I'm there and I'll coach Tiger and he'll let me yeah. coach him. So they go and uh, I can tell Tiger's like nervous, but he, I can tell he's also focused. I'm like, oh, I like that because he's doing this with his wrist, yeah. like, which he never does. And they go and I didn't know my uh, the other dad's filming behind me because I, I was like, really? You'll see in the, I'm like this, the whole like tense, dude, the whole time. I can tell the parents like, Jesus Christ, dude. But I'm like, all right, T, I'm like coaching him. And the one, the best uh, trait for my son is he's so coachable. I can tell him something to do and he will do it. Yeah. No, no, no hesitation. He will do it, which is yeah. so rare. Oh like as, God. Yeah. Dude, as a parent, I'm like, oh fuck, dude, this kid's going to be a beast if he gets in the right, you know, uh, structure. So he fucking takes this kid. He, he's, he's right. And I go, T, uh, single. He gets the single. And remember he's six, dude. This kid's 11, way bigger. He gets the single. He's I'm like, drag it. He pull it towards you. Pulls it towards him. I go, now flare to the double. Like I used to do in the UFC. That was my move. And he just happens. Boom. Takes him down. He sees me go, yeah. And the other parent's like, Jesus Christ. And then they're going the, because the kid's bigger. He's getting up. I'm like, T, get your hooks in, get his neck. Get your hooks in, get his neck. Boom, boom. And then I see the kid turn over and T, rear naked choke. And taps him. I look at the camera and go, yeah. I didn't know the guy was filming. But it's so intense. Yeah. Just I felt so much pressure, dude. And I remember some of the parents, I think, complained. Like, I don't know if we want this atmosphere. And then one of the dads like, yeah, man, I don't know if we want, like, that highly competitive atmosphere. And I just told him, I said, dude, I'm telling you, I'm doing you guys a favor. Because this isn't shit, man. If these kids are cut out for sports, what you just experienced isn't shit, man. My kid's six. My kid's 11. He should not be able to do that, man. Yeah. And he got all the ice cream. We got a Slurpee. I was just fucking. <laughs> but it's just like to your, back to your point where, you know, you're coaching your kids. I, I'll never overstep my boundaries with those coaches, yeah. you know, ever. But I'll definitely, you know, I'll see stuff. I'm like, oh, man, I wish they would have done that. And I'm like, I wish they would have did this instead. So I'll take him after him. Like, not that your coach is wrong. You can still do that. You can also do it like this, buddy. Yeah. And so hopefully he'll, he'll peek up on one of the two. But also... I think now that I'm in comedy and podcasts, I'm so like distance from it. I still, you know, I still have, you know, the food truck show where I talk to fighters and stuff like that, but I'm pretty far away from the game. man. I really am. I, that's funny. I always, that, that's you. how I feel like I'm, I I'm, always see you in the comments of like, you know, I always see you in the mix of things of like, uh, I'll of make like, some comments and you know, it's still, and I think, you know, it's good. I'll make a comment on some big fight, you know, on the shop show where I break down the fights or whatever, but, and then it get picked up, which is cool to stay relevant. Even I'm kind know. of bummed that you and Dana White aren't good friends. Yeah, that that's his thing, not me. I'm you know you know me. I'm yeah. like, and I've I've said this pretty openly. Like I'm down to mend the fence. Like all good, dude. You did yeah. me a favor, dude. And I think he's the greatest thing ever happened in the UFC. Greatest pr promoter of all time. I have no issue with him. I've never met him. I, I never met him. I always think I always he's think an ego I'd... guy. He's an, you know rightfully so. That's he's what a, a what uh, ego guy. Oh really? Like, it's all about ego and disrespect. And you know, back in the day, we both disrespect each other. And you know, he shot his shot. I shot mine. And we're both doing good. We've made it, man. You you I made it. You made it. You have four hundred million dollars. What are you mad at? Yeah. So I, I don't yeah. know if it's still there, but you know the thick boy business model those calabas fight companions the food truck diaries the flashback fight nights using the ufc fighters he could probably squash all that if he wanted if he really hated me he could probably tell the fighters hey no more going to shop show or you know as far as calabas fight companion he probably sh he might be able to shut that down we don't use their footage but I'm sure he could do some stuff if he wanted to yeah so i don't know if the hatred's that far you know but um i don't know i have no issues with him whatsoever yeah I've never, I've never met him, I've, I, but I, I like him. I just like him. He's a I like, beast. I like. There's something about him I like that. I don't know, but I like. I like everyone. There's not a lot of. There's not a lot of fighters that I dislike. There's nobody, whether it's in sports, whether it's UFC, Bellator, NFL, NBA, 
comedy. There's nobody. I have zero enemies. Yeah. I don't hate anybody, dude. I don't hate anybody. I don't have Nothing. anyone. I don't hate anybody. I think that's part of the problem we have with breaking up with girls and firing employees. Like, I just see the best in everyone. <laughs> Even yeah. someone talks to I'm like, yeah, well, he did do that one thing. I'm like, he fucking killed your dog. I'm like, I know, but he did give me that banana back in fifth grade. So you know, wait, is, like, is Penny, is Patty Pembleton good? Patty is, uh, yeah, he's, he's the next Conor McGregor. I didn't realize how big of a deal he was. I know he's big, right? I'm yeah. in the game. I know he's fucking big. And when they did UFC in London, he was the third fight before the main event. But that arena was there for him. He's, he's, the, he calls himself the fifth Beatle. He's so big, dude, out there. Yeah. He's big here. Like, we're on the street. People recognize both of us. We're taking pictures. And I asked him, are you getting recognized around here? He goes, a lot more, man. I was, when I was in New York, that was pretty crazy. He's like, but when I'm, overseas he's like dude i i, I can barely walk the streets it's he's I 27 love- and he's like what's great about him is you know his last fight was at 55 we did food truck i fed him wagyu beef burgers these phenomenal burgers and he asked for like a quadruple or triple stack burger yeah, and, I and when i walk up i'm like oh he's big dude like you know i know he's been eating I mean, how much you weigh and i goes i don't know probably 210 you know your fight was at 155 he goes, yeah I go, dude and he goes, mate, and the, I'm not even going to try to do his accent. He's so funny. He goes, I'm not, he goes, I'm not taking a short notice fight. He goes, I don't need to fight. He's like as big as I fucking want. <laughs> he goes, and then when, when they give me time, I'll cut the weight. I don't give a fuck. And he, to him, it's like, he's cocky in the sense, like, you remember when Connor was coming up? Yeah. It's my favorite come up of all time. Uh, all time. There's not, not a better ride in the history of sports. It yeah. was so fucking great. Well, there's two guys in Hamzat. I don't know if you know Hamzat. No. He's a 170 er He's um He's not the guy that has a split lip, is that's he? Him. I know him, yeah. Fucking savage. He's a fucking savage. Just fought Gilbert Burns. Yeah. But there his come up and uh Patty's, if you if you're looking for something to get into, this just their come ups are fu- it's, the, the, it's it's the ride right now, dude. Look how big he is right now. Dude, go to my Instagram. Look at the pic. He's bigger than me, dude. His face. As Theo says, that's where my name, you know, the King of Sting came from because Theo says it looks like I got stung by a thousand bees, my face. So funny, I didn't know that. Yeah. Dude, if you look at Patty, he got stung by all the bees. But he's, he, he's such a good person. And he, what he says, you can t- it's not for like clickbait or anything. Yeah. Like, he's not doing it because he knows, you know, he's ex Conor McGregor. He's doing it because, if you go to my Instagram, he's doing it because he um, genuinely believes that, man. And well, it's like I, so authentic. What I love about him is that scousers don't get knocked out. It's the best. It's the best. Yeah, big is, dude. He oh fights at 155. But he looks like me. I'm such a good, like, just a good. But, and he, his haircut's like that because he's from Liverpool, where the Beatles are from. He's yeah. from the fifth Beatle, dude. <laughs> he's, I love that. I love that scousers don't get knocked out. I yes. love that because it sets. Because that one fight, he got tagged a couple times. Bisbing, I think, called him on it. I talked to him about that. And he goes, it's not how you start, it's how you finish. But you did get tagged a couple times because he set it up so that you go, shit, man. Is, does, will he live up to what he said? I fucking love that. I love that mentality. When I first heard Scousers don't get knocked that's out. Why, that's when it went viral. He's like, when I said that line, he said it outside the UFC when he's coming up in Cage Warriors, which Cage Warriors is a league in uh, the UK where Connor came from Bisbing, Darren Till, Aspinall, Hardy, like the who's who come out of there. So he's from there. And I don't, because I was saying this on my, uh, the shop show before he fought in UFC London. I said, UFC jitters are real. Like, yeah. you know, it's the same thing as, you know, you might be doing stand up comedy and then we get a Netflix special or Comedy Central special and you got to shoot that night. It's a little bit of a different vibe. You want to make it as close as possible. It's just the pressure is a little different. Fighting the UFC is is so intense. It's different than anything you've ever yeah. experienced. The crowd. So I was like, I'm curious how Patty will respond to a huge crowd like this. Said that. Didn't do my homework. Said that. These fans from Liverpool are like, hey, numb nuts. He was selling out that arena before he even fought in the UFC. Three times over. Really? I was like, what? Like, yeah. This is nothing new to him. He's the reason that thing sold out in three minutes. It's not because the main event co He's the reason this sold out so fast. The moment can't get big enough for this kid. You're like, oh, fuck. I love that energy, man. 
he's and he's such a good like positive person just you know happy go lucky like that i fucking love that kid i love him and that's the thing when fighters come on the show i'll create you know i'll get this personal connection and then i'm just super biased super biased i i couldn't do what you do because i've i've been introduced to a lot of your fighters like i i found out jake paul was a fighter on your show really when he came in through water balloons at yeah, Dylan yeah. Dennis. At Dan Dan Dennis. yeah and was i was weird. like and i was like oh wait jake paul's really a fighter <laughs> like i gotta be dead honest with you I, it was through you that i started really enjoying the paul brothers mm. because i i think i i think you were the one maybe you or rogan were talking about their they have some skills and then i went oh so this isn't just like uh i've always kind of uh you know i logan and i were friends first and then i met jake but i I've, i know logan pretty well brilliant dude brilliant dude I, 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 business man, wise have, I'm, have you done a show no oh you crushed on me oh yeah yeah maybe but, uh, the thing the thing about them is so like when all of that was going on there's one moment where i fell in love with both brothers wholeheartedly like i watched the fights i was enjoying them i, I think i was kind of watching them half ass when jake paul ripped off floyd mayweather's hat mm. and got beat up and got beat up there was a lot that i identified with that i identified with the comic who's ma- taking the joke too far and is still thinking it's a joke but he's got some sores on his face i identified with that <laughs> but there was a moment where jake logan paul did a fuck this is i this is, i feel silly to say this is one of the hardest i've laughed jake paul logan paul did a um a vlog about this whole experience and that he was upset at jake and and he was really genuinely upset that jake took his moment and made it about him and they were on the plane and they were not talking and their mom had tried to broker a deal and beat him off and yeah and jake is on the plane on a private jet next to him and you can see jake's like like i fucked up both worth like 40 million dollars and jake's looking at him and gives him the puppy dog eyes and Logan looks at him, <laughs> and Jake kind of leans in, like, "Are we gonna be cool?" And J- my bad, and man. Logan's like, "Yeah." Dude. Jake goes in a little further, and grabs his hat, and I Hilarious. fucking fell. I was like, yeah. "Okay, I would love hanging out with these guys. I would like everything about them because that energy—that's the energy I grew up around. That, yes, that like it's it's a it's a fucking it's a it's a it's a bro attitude. It's, it's a bro. A, it's yeah. a bro attitude of like you would." fucking love because even i had you know obviously you'll see stuff online stuff like that you know people make comments about them i was like guys kids are probably tools like privileged tools whatever yeah and then you see behind the scenes with logan stuff, you're like holy fuck this kid is a monster yeah genius when it comes to marketing promote genius dude and it's like he has a team don't get me wrong but he is the captain of that ship i would i would be more interested in hanging out with with probably jake or logan and just listening to his brain talk I mean, I'd, I'd love to do his podcast, you guys have vibe on podcast. That too. i just, just text with him this morning I, but I'd, I'd be interested in watching in in like bouncing ideas off yeah of you, you two would fucking crush it together it'd be yeah. great we gotta set that up well let's, let's but, but talk, then let's... But, but then uh lastly this is what kind of guy jake paul is so i do a twice a month i do a shop and friends at the hollywood improv right mm-hmm. we have one tonight and uh jake paul came to the last one i didn't know he came to the last one he's in the green room and uh you know he watches my stuff and he goes hey man you, you think i'll uh, i'll really get that conor mcgregor fight he's trying to get in the ufc and Is dana's really? dana's kind of entertaining it but his uh he issued a kind of a deal to dana he tweeted this at them which i thought was funny because you know dana started talking shit about jake paul you gotta be careful man because remember that's what jake does he lives in that world so if you're going to engage in that it's just not your lane yeah. so dana did like a you know a dad video like you can see up his nose and he's talking shit about jake well jake's like in a room or something on vacation he goes oh oh you want to talk shit cool dude within 15 minutes how to reply graphics edits music dana with coke out of his nose hookers You're like holy just lights dana up and then so they talk all this shit, but then it kind of calmed down. And Dana goes, I'll never say no. They're like, I'm not gonna say no, he'll never find the UFC. I never say no. I always leave the door open. Who knows what happened? So then Jake makes an offer and goes, Hey, if you let me fight Conor McGregor in the UFC <clears throat> at 170 or whatever, he goes, and if I win, you have to change the minimum fighter pay forever. 
if I lose, I will donate my purse to the rest of the undercard. You don't have to pay me. Just let me fight Connor. But if I win, you have to change the fighter pay. So I see he comes to my uh, show. He comes to my show at the improv. And I see him in the back. He goes, hey, man, you think I have a chance to get that Connor fight? I go, I do. I do. I said, here's the thing. Your stance on fighter pay, I loved it. You're, you're, you're the voice that the fighters need. You're the one guy who makes a change. You have such a big profile. This is great. I love that you're doing that. I wish I could do it. I love you doing that. If you would just back off that, I think they would offer you a contract. I said, because you got to look at it as a business. So let's say Dana agrees to that. All right, I'll change fighter pay for you if you beat yeah. Connor, which is a big if for him to beat Connor. He's like, if you beat Connor, I'll change fighter it's a pay. Big if. Big if. Huge if. I mean, he could do it. He could do it. Yeah. Big if. And I mean, I don't know anything about and, fighting. And, and, so. and MMA, it's a big if. Very tough fight for him. The, he'd be an underdog for sure. With Connor with his leg kicks and speed and all that and experience. Big if. But there's a chance with how hard he hits, trains, he's an athletic kid, wrestled. I think he was all state in the state of Ohio. So there are no punks. Him yeah. and his brother both all state in Ohio. Well, you know, Ohio, Iowa, Texas, California, probably the best markets to amateur wrestling. So he I go, he would offer you a fight, but you have to back off the fighter pay. I say, because if you look at it as like a business, let's say Dana says, okay, I'll do that. And you, by chance, knock out Conor McGregor. And he changes fighter pay. Let's say Dana makes $100 million. He's not going to. Let's say he makes $100 million off you. He's going to lose money, dude. Because that changes this fighter pay minimum forever. For the, forever. So it's, you're talking billions of dollars? It's yeah. just not worth it to him. So he has no incentive to do it, man. Yeah. Even if your fight made $500 million, still in the long scheme, lose money. So you have to back off that. And I thought he was doing this fighter pay thing is a, you know, that's always the, the comments people throw at Dana, fighter pay, fighter pay. So I thought Jake was doing that to just, you know, get the fans appreciation. You know what he told me? It's just me and him. He doesn't know I'm going to tell the story. He might be mad I even told the story. He has no idea. He just can't do it. Won't do it. It has to be about the fighter's pay. I'm not taking the fucking fight. He goes, because then I'll just wait because Connor only has one fight left. And then we'll just do it on my own. And I'll make sure everybody on the car gets paid. He goes, I will only fight if they change fighters' pay. I'm like, oh, you're serious about this? I thought it was a Mark thing. He goes, absolutely not, man. They're fucking you guys over. I'm like, holy fuck, dude. Jesus. Respect. That's fascinating. Fascinating. Yeah, those brothers, I, I, I get a kick out of them. I'm glad, I, I'm glad I'm on. And, and I know there's probably people that hate on them, but I'm glad I'm on the side the pe- of liking them because they're really enjoyable to watch. Dude, what, you know, I worked the uh, Floyd Mayweather, um, Logan Paul fight. I was like the Logan Paul expert, right? So I had to interview him before the fight. And we're in Miami, you know, I'm in my fucking suit or whatever. And I have to go to the green room before he fights. It's like fucking, I don't know, 30 minutes before he fights. And I thought to myself, oh, he's going to be shit in his pants. He's going to get his ass whooped. Yeah. He's go, you know, he's fighting, you know, the best of all time. This thing going to be good, man. But as I'm walking through, I, I peek in, I see Floyd warming up on the mitts. And the first time I ever went, oh, he looks 46 years old. He looks slow. He looks slow, man. So I went, hmm. So I go in Logan Paul's green room. I figure it's me chaos. It's never been this big of a fight. Dude, you want to talk about that Mickey Mantle gene that you always talk about? I've never seen a more calm, chill locker room in my entire fucking, and I've been in locker rooms. Yeah. There's like yoga music playing. Like this, weird, there's fucking f- f- like smoke, like weird shit, pl- like incense, pl- and calm nobody gives a fuck i look over and logan's like this and i go dude you're fighting like 30 minutes we gotta do an interview he goes yeah still uh let me get my hands wrapped i go hey man you're fighting i'm like trying to motivate i'm like you're fighting floyd mayweather in fucking 30 minutes he goes yeah i know dude and he looks at me he goes this is the chillest lock i'm like you should have more concern he goes i've already won dude i've already won he's yeah I'm, I'm fighting. A, he goes, I'm a YouTuber. I'm fighting. Dude, this story is for yeah. He goes, I'm fighting fucking Floyd Mayweather. That's he goes, fun. I've already won, dude. Who gives a fuck what happens? God, that's fucking brilliant. His dad was nervous. So his dad came and I just talked to him. I said, here's the thing, dude. Floyd's way smaller. So worst case, your son's going to stop with a body shot. You never have to go through this again. He's not going to knock him out. He's too small. But your son has a size advantage, which can be difficult for Floyd to navigate through. He's yeah. a lot bigger. He's going to be okay. His dad was like hyperventilating. And then you see the fight, and you're like, what the fuck, dude? That's why I went into the back and went viral as fuck. Cause I'm like, I walked in, he's rounding me, I go, you won. And yeah. I'm not saying technically he won the fight. I'm saying 
you went whatever eight rounds with the best ever do it with fu- your records own two or the fuck it is you've won fucking dude. insane nuts people are so mad at me oh shop thinks logan oh no no i'm saying in life <laughs> he's won yeah no they're just good people man we should talk about your special we both have fucking shit we have to do today we're fucking this is i could talk to you for fucking i could ever. talk to you for I'm fucking ever a fucking hot second i know so I know. where did you shoot the special dallas so my oh wait I, I knew I, I remember when you were shooting it yep sean yeah. in dallas addison improv and then addison was great because i said i don't want to look like an improv it has to look like a special and they went do whatever the fuck you want to the set so i flew my set designer brian johnson out built a whole new set and took him he got there on a tuesday by friday he was ready to go built a whole new set um lights everything my team flew out there i had nine guys you know seven cameras the whole the whole thing we shot thursday friday saturday oh, shot it yeah. edited myself the music's all my all my own and uh yeah man it's gonna be dope and it's, 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 thir- it's, th- it's 30 minutes it's 30 airing, special it's airing april 28th on eight uh, days. thick boy youtube on thick boy youtube it's on my own fucking channel God. banking and on myself brother are you gonna do more specials you think oh yeah do, do i mean doing other comics too uh you think you'll be putting up because that's like a louis thing yeah, I'm gonna do uh, I'm gonna do Brian Callens for him. Uh, we're shooting it, I think, in July in Brea. So I'm gonna do oh, Callens, wow. mm-hmm. and then yeah, I'm sure I'll help Jeff Die out, like Chappelle, you know, David Lucas. Like, I think that's kind of what I can do, man. I think going through my special and realizing like what it takes and the budget, and then remember my first special, which was insane. My first special on Showtime. I I've been at that high level and seen behind the scenes with how they did it. Yeah. And I learned from all that, like we always do. And then I brought it over and did what I didn't like and what I do like. So kind of figured it out, man. So I think it'll be good. Dude, I got to tell you, I, I literally could sit and talk to you for fucking hours. Forever, dude. I, I absolutely love you, man. And, I, and I'm my so happy for your people, success. Man. I'm so, I look at you as like a real, like you're doing it on such a fucking high level mm. that you're inspiring as fuck, man. Thanks, brother. Every, everything about you is inspiring. So I'm 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 really proud to call you a friend and, and yeah you too man and I'm really happy for you. Congrats I'm, on the I'm special. trying to keep up with you, man. You and Tom, man. I try. I told Tom when I went on uh, two beers, one cave when I filled in for you. I was like, yeah. dude, you guys are my north stars, man. Like you're well, the dude, guys I look at. Same to you, man. Same, yeah. same right back at you, man. I, I'm telling you. Yeah, I think that yeah, the special for me is gonna be a game changer. And man. your fucking whiskey, yeah, it's nice. It's right? legit. I tried to not get too much of a buzz. I have to do Corolla, and I was like. If I roll in drunk, I'll start saying really regrettable shit. Me too. Like, I'm, I'm, I would have drank that whole fucking bottle. Yeah, I would have drank the whole I know, fucking I was like, bottle. It is fucking ten thirty. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for doing this. You're brother. the best, man. Love you.